Guys, we are here at Spetsy 2023. It is, the doors are open, as that lady said right there. We have the crowd coming in. Thousands of people will be attending recumbent riders, cargo uh, bikes, all kinds of things here. We're excited to be at Spetsy here in Germany. Come on in. Welcome. So there on the balcony is Hardy Zebek the uh, former owner of Spetsy, and he's being welcomed here today uh, as an emeritus owner, I guess, uh, with uh, Franz uh, from Wolf & Wolf. So there's the transition between the old Spetsy and the new Spetsy here at Lochringen. 2019 was the last Spetsy in Germersheim by Mardi. 2023 zum ersten Mal in Lauchring und dazu möchte ich alle ganz, ganz herzlich begrüßen. Vor allen Dingen der Hardy, der neben mir steht, der uns die Messe übergeben hat und wir sie hoffentlich in seinem Sinne weiterführen werden. Hallo, liebe Spezi-Fans. Ich freue mich so, dass nach vier Jahren Abstinenz die Messe, die Spezi, endlich wieder stattfinden kann. Und ich, ich bin glücklich, dass diese Messe hier weiter stattfinden wird und einen neuen Aufschwung nehmen wird. Da bin ich ganz sicher, die Firma Wolf und Wolf habe ich richtig ins Herz geschlossen und es ist hier eher ein menschlicher Deal als ein finanzieller Deal. Ich freue mich sehr, dass Firma Wolf und Wolf, das in, ja, in alter Tradition weitermacht, aber auch neue Impulse geben wird. Als kleines Geschenk für dich, dass du immer an die Spezi denkst. Ja. Ari, schneid das Bändelchen durch. Die Spezi 2023 ist hiermit eröffnet. I wanted to uh, thank our amazing sponsors here at the Laid Back Bike Report at Spetsy 2023. Who are they? Let's see, Radical Design, HP Velotechnic, Bent Revolution, uh, let's see, we got Jersey Bents, Falco E Motors, uh, we've got TerraCycle, yes. uh, let's see, Connecticut Yankee Peddler, and uh, anybody else? Uh, Oh, Andrew at Trailside Trikes, I think is it. No, for sure not. So, guys, thank you so much for supporting us at the Laid Back Bike Report here at Spetsy 2023. We are here with my buddy, Danielle Gonano. How are you, Danielle? Excellent. Very good to see you again. <laughs> and you as well. So, guys, you've seen uh, Danielle on the show before, and he, he does the amazing tilting mechanism and puts it into a number of different uh, bikes and has a uh, Velomobile that he does that with as well. But we're gonna have Daniel talk about the mechanism itself and uh, where he's going with all this. So Daniel, what, where do you want to start? Excellent, so let's start from what we sell. And this is the tilting mechanism. And uh, this is a tilting unit, it's five years of work uh, with uh, quite a few refinement. And now it's, uh, it's never a final product, but it's much improved. So we sell it to be uh, installed in a recumbent bike. So the, the, the reason is that if you want to have an extra stability, you start from a recumbent bike and I will show you the, how mm -hmm. it is used. And then you add the, the mechanism and the third wheel and you go from a recumbent bike to a tilting trike. All right, so this is what we sell. And now let's see how it goes on a bike. All right. All right, so great. We can see how it works in okay. real life. Yeah. Now this is a performer bike. And the, the way it works, it, it is installed in place of the, of the rear wheel, actually. And we can see the tilting. This is the tilting mechanism, how it works. 
and the added value is also the rear suspension, which can be, uh, let's say, adapted to the weight of the rider very easily. And uh, how to lock it? Well, to lock it, we simply need to uh, pull the rear brake, as I'm doing now. And when I pull the, um, let's say, the, the rear brake, the bike stands vertical. So the tilting lock is actually very, very easy to use. Yes. What's the marketing <clears throat> like? What are you doing? So what we are doing is, uh, well, we are, we are using the, uh, let's say, the, all the work after five years to sell the tilting unit, all right? And then what we do, we are trying to, uh, to find somebody to um, collaborate on the, on the production. I am in close contact with my friend, uh, friend uh, Jim Parker from Cruise Bike. He's very interested, so uh, he's trying to see whether it fits on the cruise bike. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see whether we can actually uh, put it in production uh, with them. Would right, be, yeah, Jim has, worked, Jim has worked on a tilting trike, as we have I seen uh, from I time know. to time, and nothing is developed, but yeah. I hope that now things can start moving, uh, so this is a possibility. But then we have also our market here with uh, do-it-yourself kind of uh, people. They build their, uh, let's say, uh, bike frame, and then they adapt it to the tilting mechanism. But uh, the funny thing is that somebody, I have somebody who said, I don't have the bike, I love your mechanism, I will have to find the bike to be able to install your mechanism. So it's the other way around. They start mm. from nothing to be able to install the, the mechanism. So, okay, so that's uh, as of today. But the next step is the Velomobile. This is the Aero Tilt, so it's a Velomobile which tilts. And first, I would like to show you how I get into the yeah. Aero Tilt. Well, let's do it. It's, uh, it's very easy and that's how it works. All right. I need to do this, and then I sit. I put my feet in here. There. It's done. And And here I'm ready to take, to take off, so it's very easy to get off. Very easy. And off we go. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. We're at the back end of the aero tilt. What do you want to show us here? Okay, so the aero tilt seen from the back. What is interesting is that we have a lot of space for the bags. And actually, the, this is the space that we created with the two wheels. And inside, we have the, um, the mechanism that we cannot see, but we have the mechanism over there. Now I show you the tilting. I release the mechanism. And when I release the mechanism, the bike can actually tilt. And then I block it again and the bike stands on its own. All right, Daniel, so thank you so much for spending a little time with us uh, here at Spetsy and uh, with your amazing aero tilt and tilting mechanism, we wish you all the best, thanks. We are here at the Alight booth with Leo Vischer, yes? Yes. It's yeah. nice to meet you, Leo. I haven't had a chance to meet you up until now, so it's great to have you uh, on the laid back bike report. So Leo, tell our audience what sort of thing Alight does. What do you make? I make several things, say parts for recumbents and velomobiles, small parts like idlers, chain wheels, and for the cargo bike industry I make wheels, and one of my big next projects will be a pedal generator for anyone who wants it, so that is in the end hay pitch fee vehicles. Right, so the, the, the Bike 2 is the... Yeah, the way. Bike 2 system. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I bought for little money the Bike 2 system because they were tired of doing it. After 12 years, they were looking for yeah, new blood, if you can say it. Right. And okay. I will give it a try. Let's, we're going to look at some of the other things here, but if you could just describe for the audience what a pedal generator actually is. How does this work and what does it replace? The, then, then you have a generator where your pedals are and you can pedaling with your hands or your feet that doesn't matter and it gives a little bit energy but it should in my optic give you the feeling of what a chain has always been so a direct um, connection between what's happening with you and your vehicle 
and what you are doing with your muscles and body. That that's what what I want. Right. So uh, and so to be specific, this this pedal generator actually replaces a chain. Yes. It replaces the chain, and if you thinking about three and four wheelers, cargo bikes, they have very complicated drive trains, mm -hmm. and then it can be an economical solution to replace the drive train if you have a say a rented fleet. You can make quickly adjustment, less maintenance, and you can add, but that you can add on many ways, more controller, mm -hmm. uh, control by the manufacturer over what's happening with your vehicle. So just to be clear, so we pedal, it's got a generator, it puts energy into the system with a battery, with a battery. and then the motors are on the wheels, right? Yeah, and yeah. so this is the yeah. propulsion system, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. Um, and we'll take a look at a bike that has a, a similar system here. We are here with Andre from Golo. How you doing? It's good to see you again, Andre. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm doing good. It's a nice exhibition, isn't it? It's a beautiful I'm, one, new I'm, location. It's all great. Yeah. Now, we talked to Leo Vischer a bit about this pedal generator system that he called the Bike 2. Yeah. And now we have uh, in front of you the, an implementation of this system, and you know a lot more about this. So if you could tell us what you know about the current and where the current system, like where you think it's going. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we really like the idea of the serial hybrid generator drive because it's, uh, it skips the whole chain line. And uh, maintenance on a, on a bike, and especially on a cargo bike like this, where you don't have one chain but several chains, uh, is an issue. So with the, with the generator drive, you can uh, solve a few problems in the, in the same time. So one is maintenance, the other uh, is the drive feeling. So you have no gearing anymore, you, you're gearing electronically. So mm -hmm. like software-wise, you're gearing just with software. Um, and it gives you a lot of freedom uh, in design. So you don't have the chain running here from the front to the back that you have to leave somewhere. So uh, there's, when you have suspension, there's no chain uh, in the way. So it gives you a lot of uh, freedom and possibilities to, uh, to develop uh, the bike how you like it. Good. So, Andre, this is uh, like a current system and Leo was telling us how they are developing uh, the next generation, I guess is yeah. fair to say. So tell us a little bit about this and where you think it's going. Where, wh what developments are we to be expected? Yeah. There are several companies working on it, um, but I have tried a lot of them and till so far this is for me the only one that gives me the feeling that I'm still riding a bike with a chain. That's something that I think is important. There are people who think that's not important, but okay. I think it's important that it's still stays a bike. So to be clear, what we're, the ultimate goal here is to make it feel like you are connected with a chain like you would on a regular bike, yeah? Yeah, what you, what, what you want is that uh, it feels responsive. Mm -hmm. So if you put a little effort in it, you don't want the bike to shut off like a rocket. You want it to slowly. So when, you, when you're driving in traffic with people around you, um, you need it to react how you like it to react. So that, that, that's, that's the feeling you have with the chain. So when you with the chain, it's directly linked. When you put a little effort in it, it's slowly uh, gaining speed. And when you put a lot of effort in it, it is, yeah. Right. So as opposed to maybe some other systems where you just pedal, it has nothing to do with how fast or how slow or how much effort. Ex it just puts energy in the system, right? Exactly that, yeah. And so uh, finally then, uh, this is not available yet. What, uh, what do you foresee as far as uh, when this is going to take a little while to develop and then you're going to see it in some products? Where is this going in the next uh, year or two? You tell me. Yeah, it's a bit hard to say because I'm not the one uh, trying to put this on the market. We, we would love to put this in our cargo bike. We have developed the, the Golo cargo bike mm -hmm. where this could be a perfect system to, uh, to put in. Um, so that's also why we put it in, in the prototype of one of our Golos. Um, yeah, Leo is trying to develop it. There are other companies trying to develop something like this. But the, as I say, the Bike 2 is the only one that gives me the feeling I want to have. Um, and I know some like Mando is working for it for a long time. 
Um, it's close, but still not gives me the feeling I, I want to have in it. And it also depends on Leo and how much help he is getting, how fast uh, this, the bike too, uh, will uh, develop and become on the market. But the sooner the better for us. Right. Interesting, uh, interesting piece of, uh, of kit, I think, and uh, we'll keep our eyes on this. So, Andre, thank you so much for uh, sharing your information about this. It's great. Thank you a lot. Okay. Uh, enjoy the exhibition, and uh, we will meet again. Okay, I sure will. Okay. Thanks. Bye. So, let's go back now to some of the other products that you make. If you could briefly describe uh, your idlers and your... Uh, what's, uh, tell us about some of the things you make and, and just briefly show us. Um, yeah, this is are my idlers. I just pick one mm -hmm. to hold it in my hand. That's what I started many years ago. Um, injection molded idlers. I was then producer or uh, producer of Velomobiles and recumbents, and I needed idlers. And it was difficult to get cheap and good ones. And then I decided once, uh, then I will make my own ones. And, uh, and then I decided not to put my brand on it, but make them more no-name, uh -huh. so that competitors would be able to put my idler on their bike. So I'm not claiming their bike with my products. Okay. So, so you were not a competitor to those folks in this regard, and so they yeah, could freely yeah. buy and use yes, them. Yes, and then they, we all have the benefit of, say, semi-mass production, for a relative yeah, cheap or light and reproduced uh -huh. uh, parts. And that's what I did with the idlers. I did this here with, with the pedal, um, how do you say it? Bottom, Bottom brackets, brackets yeah. things. Uh -huh. Last was the plastic uh, clamps on it. Uh -huh. Another part what I do is CNC milling. Yeah, so chain here you see this is what a is chain. This? this is a massive plate of aluminium milled into a complex or simple uh, chain wheel with two integrated, uh, how do you call it, protection rings. Yeah, yeah. Here you see perhaps better where, where I came from. Yeah, this is where, with, with one protection ring. This was for recumbents with small rear wheels. And then you need bigger <laughs> chain wheels. And people ask me, can you make that? Challenge was the first customer for this he said can you make this I said yeah probably I can and I yeah. started with this it. is for racing this is for racing yeah. <laughs> or if you have a 45 kilometers yeah, in Europe a, a, a moped vehicle right and you need just go 45 kilometers an hour then you need a bigger chain ring so this pr this protects the chain from coming off on yeah, either side yeah, yeah. it's amazing all yeah, right yeah. and then what else we need to talk about wheels right yeah, wheels. All right, so we have some wheels. Show us what you have. This is my, yeah. my latest wheel okay. with, with a wider, wider rim. I see in cargo bikes, people are doing more and more kilos putting on the wheels. They need bigger tires. They need suspension. Yeah, therefore, I make an other wheel. Here you see the spokes bended. So do you have more suspension in the wheel? because plastic is not the best way to have a very high impact in it, then a part can break away. Mm -hmm. So you don't want that. For that I make an experiment. That's kind of, uh, call it the spider. I call it then a hybrid wheel. Mm -hmm. I will add, say, in this case, an aluminium rim to it. Then you have an old fashioned rim who can resistance to a high impact and a more yeah more, elastic more an arch and, and, yeah, okay. inside uh -huh. and it and by in, injection molding you can make nice looking things right. you, you you if you want to make this from metal you have a very hard time to get this nice wheel for metal right and, and this is a kind of a hybrid and it will take many years to find the mark niches where those wheels are good for and where those wheels this is more for rented fleets this is more for private persons because there is a huge difference between somebody who buys his own velomobile or cargo bike and people who work for car companies commercial, like commercial commercial yes and that is 
such big, you, you can't combine that in one wheel. You have to make differentiations. I don't know where that will lead me to, but it's nice to do. That's the kind of the technical man in me, yeah. try to experiment. Yeah, Leo, I mean, it's very clear to me that you love what you do here. This is, uh, this is a, a joy for you to work on, isn't yeah. it? Yes, it is, yes. It's wonderful. We are here at the Aquacon booth with uh, my friend Martin, who uh, we like to call the Commodore. <laughs> and Martin, how are you today? Yeah. My name is, no. <laughs> my name is Dr. Martin May. I'm a naval architect and I'm a passionate sailor. And when you anchor on the, in the bay, somebody has to buy the fresh bread in the morning. And when you row with the dinghy to the shore, you can't go further. And the best baker is always on the other side of the island. True. So it's very necessary to have an amphibious bike. And you've done that? Yes, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. All right, well, yeah, so why don't you tell us about this? Um, yeah, uh, the basic idea is that it has to be quick to convert from terrestrial driving to maritime version. So mm -hmm. the idea was to have two stable floats and we, I, I need a, um, a, a, a trike mm -hmm. to get the stability. And these two, two floats bring the stability and you can take it off very, very quickly. You have a... Then you can take this here and you put it here. And now... The, the bike is only 99 centimeters narrow, so that your road uh, uh, bike lane uh, um, yeah, legal, bike. legal, yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you drop this down because underneath, if you come here, Trace, got it, go ahead. Here underneath, here underneath, you have a thousand watt propeller left and right, and here are the controls, which are remote to this receiver and, and the battery. So when you when you go on the on the boat on the bike, you go here and then you can control it like a like a tank. And you also need the two wheels in front to climb up the beach, because when you have sand and waves, the the sand is very soft, and I need the fat tires and also this one as buoyancy and support for the weight distribution. And so you can just go very easily from the land in, into the sea. And also when you cycle around a lake, you don't need to go the whole way around, you just cross it. <laughs> and I got a big order from, uh, from Ukraine, because uh, when, when they came and saw this, they said, we want to order them because we don't have bridges anymore. Right. They've, They've been Russians. bombed out? Or? Yes, exactly. Wow. So this is the best way to go to work. So uh, in, in the first time I was, I wanted to design a fun and, and leisure boat. Right. But now it's a survival bike right. for the people who don't have bridges anymore. So you were thinking recreation when you started out yes. with this, but now it's become very practical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Martin, it, I noticed that this is built on a, a Stein trike, yes, the wild one. Yes, because you can see here the hey. base. The base is the Steintreich, and these are pieces which just snap on. So within three minutes, you have just two, two, two screws, and the Steintreich is built with, with a tube left and right. Mm -hmm. So it has to be quick and easy to convert from the naked bike to the amphibious bike. The next generation now is a carbon fiber center frame where all these floats just snap on. So you can, within 10 seconds, you can convert, convert? into wow. the other one. Very and, nice. and the next generation is also is a pedal generator where mm. I generate electricity, yes. uh, amps, and they go into the central battery. And then I can distribute the power, the so-called bike by wire, mm -hmm. into the hub wheel motors and also to the propellers. We saw the bike two pedal generator yesterday. We yeah. Yeah. so is it this type of system? That, I'm working that, actually with the with the Scheffler. Yeah, the Scheffler. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. With yeah, the Scheffler, they are now ready for the market. I spoke to Scheffler since two years. Okay. They said no, we're not ready. We're not ready. Great. He said, come on, I need it. I need it urgently because I have all these amphibious designs. Because there will be also a hydrofoiling version coming. Because the thing is that. 
we live in a civilization, but we want to go into the nature sure. in a remote area, and there's a certain distance which you have to overcome. And then the best version is the hydrofoiling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is a so-called ship-to-shore shuttle because I designed these floating uh, houseboats and the yachts. Okay. And you always want to go with your beautiful wife. Thank you. Into the restaurant, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then we can we can actually drive to the to the restaurant, and we go for a, for a, uh, for a fish or a schnitzel. You know, plus uh, three yeah. kilowatt hours. I'm all for the schnitzel. I'm, I'm, I'm into that. So that's wonderful. What are amazing creative ideas you have? Uh, not just this, but so many other things here, Martin. Let's talk about uh, the actual production. Uh, uh, re realistically speaking, so uh, some of these people here see this and they say, "Yeah, I want to have one of these things." Yeah. Ooh, are you ready to produce enough for folks right now? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. So the. I I have, a, I have a shipyard and we are specialists for carbon fiber vacuum bagging or resin infusion, epoxy. Mm -hmm. We also use epoxy resin, which is 56% of vegetable oil. And the foam core is built out of recycled PET bottle. It's a structural foam. And instead of carbon, I can also use hemp fiber. Okay. Because um, I love nature and yeah. I want to just to make design. it sustainable. I eh? want to I want to use uh, e-mobility in a in a sustainable way. Yeah, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So uh, this is the flying bicycle mm -hmm. because it's always nice to cycle on the water, and I'm offering uh, um, hiking on the water, mm. but in a very fast way because all the other boats who are faster make waves and are noisy. But with this foiling system, I can go with 20 kilometers an hour without waves, without any noise, and I can really enjoy nature. Uh -huh. And it's based on the Manta 5, which is from New Zealand. Okay. But the, the, the negative thing of the Manta 5 is that I always get wet. And I have to start from the water. I can't have my, my mobile phone with me, I can't have my, my car key, because it's salt water. And my wife gets wet and then she gets cystitis. So oh, no. this is not, no, 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 right. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a no-go. Happy wife is so, important. Yeah. Exactly, and this is why I designed this for my wife. And these are two uh, boxes in carbon, uh -huh. which snap together here, you know. And then you can use the standard Manta 5 as a boat. And when you're tired, you just land on the water. Mm. And when you start cycling, we have 600 watt MPF motor, which is IPX7 mm -hmm. and salt water resistant. Mm -hmm. So I start cycling and after three meters, I'm co completely foil borne. And then, and then the, um, the, the drag goes down by 80%. Wow. And then you fly over the water with 20 kilometers an hour. It's gorgeous. <laughs> You have don't you don't have trucks you don't have uh, holes in the yeah. on the road, you know. Nice. And uh, this and you can also take it off and then you can go like a sports guy, just with a naked mantle. And the idea is very important to show here. This is a canal con configuration. Yeah. So the main uh, um, wing is in the rear and this is the the aileron mm -hmm. and this is the wave sensor. So this is exactly the water line, so you actually fly 30 centimeters above the water. And the nice thing is that actually you can have all your picnic uh, stuff with you, and then I can also make a carbon fiber tube across. Then I have two. So it's a catamaran. Oh, wow, yeah. And then I can put a little Connected. carbon panel, and we can lie in the sun. You can bring so, your friends with you. Yes. Yeah, very nice. And this is the nice thing because this is the, the future of biking on the, on the water. water. And we don't have so much electric energy, so we have to use it in an intelligent way. And if I look at the birds, they do it since many thousand years. Right. And as water has a 600 higher uh, times density, density. Yeah. I can live with smaller wings. And the most efficient way is actually to drive on the water uh, with, a, with a hydrofoil. There you go. The flying bike. The flying bike. Yes. All right, yeah. Martin, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Of course. Okay. We're here with Hans Agala, uh, our buddy from Azeb, and at this beautiful booth here at Spetsy. Hans, yeah. congratulations. You waited a little while to get this up, I understand. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, we did our best.
Yeah, it looks great. All right, so we're going to talk about a couple of uh, a trike and a bike, I guess, today. What do we have yes. right here, Hansel? So we have, uh, you know, we chose the free, basically free vehicles for this podium, and uh, that's what we try to show all the greatest things from ASAP here. And let's let's talk about the Tyfly X, which is a trike with three 26-inch wheels with full full suspended, which is basically our top model and also our best seller, which is which is nice. In this configuration, we have it here. Uh, it has uh, the Bros motor. We are it's a German brand as well. Mm -hmm. It has 90 newton meters, so it is very powerful. It uh, it is also pretty quiet compared to others. It has a large screen, uh, which is great to see, colorful one. And what we like as well is that for you know people with some limitations, you, it requires less force to get in it initiated, mm -hmm. let's say, yeah. And in this particular one, we combine it with a, a 1 by 12 gearing from SRAM, and it's the wireless system, so there are no cables, not a, a wired ones, not, not the cable ones, so just the wireless. Right. So it's a nice... Uh, Look nice at the size of that cassette. System. It's massive, yeah. yeah. Yeah, really something good. what we years ago couldn't imagine for the front gears you have now in the in the in the cassette, let's say. Right. Yeah. All right. And did you want to talk about the seat uh, as well? This looks very yeah. comfortable. What do you have there? So this is the dream seat we introduced last year. It's a highly padded, very comfortable seat. We say that you experience the nirvana in it. It's like riding on a cloud, whatever. Compared to our competition or what we try to achieve is also that uh, we like incorporated a design in the front. Uh, so there is a nose, nose here, which prevents the rider from sliding out of the seat. And uh, the experience is very positive. So I think, well, yeah, we, we take that box. And it also has a custom uh, colors. So, mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Metallic white and uh, and the glitter red, as as we call it. So a beautiful contrast. Nice. All right, Hansa. So we don't get the opportunity to talk about two wheelers uh, that often anymore. And you guys do great uh, bikes. So tell us what we have here. So this is the Azub Max 700. So it has a whatever, 700C or 28 inch or even 29 inch wheels. Basically, it's still the same kind of size. And this time uh, for the Spetsi show, we build it in a gravel style, like a gravel bike, basically. So it has a, and to, to add additional comfort to the bike, we, we use the Lauf fork, which is a carbon fiber front fork with a carbon suspension. So it moves three centimeters, which is one and something of inch, up and down here on those three. These are carbon three. fiber so slats kind of thing, yeah? Yeah, like a leaf springs. Ah. It's a bit similar to the Thai fly, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so it, the, the materials does the suspension. Flex. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, so it's here, it's very light. Uh, it gives those three centimeters what is what we think is enough for the gravel riding. It also does not increase the height of the bike too much as a normal suspended fork would do. And yeah, it's a nice, nice piece of uh, cycling product. Uh, it comes from Iceland. Okay, and are there any other recumbents that you're aware of that use a, a fork like well, this? We we can offer it, we can build it. We, we build it out under the epic level of builds, so it's not in the configurator. You really have to ask us to, okay. to build it for you. But there were some, at least one other recumbent before that uses this fork. It okay. was the Schlitter Encore, I, I guess. Oh, the Encore, years, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a few years ago. Okay, oh, I didn't understand. And then it has, uh, again, the gravel bike, uh, shifting or gearing, so it, uh, wireless SRAM Rival 2x11, 2x11, yeah. 
and to make it nice, you know, we try to use a, a color which is kind of fitting to the gravel yeah. style. The, yeah, earth the tones, tires, kind of. The yeah. tires, the, the, uh -huh. the grips. It has a carbon fiber seat, you know, Ortley, Ortley bags, you know, so it's kind of gravel style yeah. of bike. This is attention to detail. All right, one last question, Hansa. How much did it cost to put this booth together? Ooh. Okay. <laughs> it was roughly 4,000 US dollars. Oh, wow. Okay. I wasn't expecting an answer. So, Hansa, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today on Layback Bike Before. We appreciate it. We are here with uh, the famous Charles Henry. Talking about future bikes, behind us is an amazing future bike that you have developed, yes? Yep. So, yeah, it's called the 441. Sure. And, yeah, please tell me the story of the 441. Well, 441 is not just a number. It is a number that means um, four wheels for one person. So this is a very simple story. And the emphasis lays on the four wheels. And me, I personally think that four wheels is the future of velomobiling since you have a lot of customers that we can't reach with just three wheels. Mm -hmm. Three-wheeler is uh, something that is well established in our little circle, but we are turning around that circle for a long time now. And there are some escapes, like when you want to develop something new, you go rather for a four-wheeler than for a three-wheeler. With three-wheelers, since they are so well established, you can't do that much mistakes. We, we since we are the second one who is um, like, the, you know, the quattro velo, which is a very, very nice velomobile, but it weighs a little bit much. It is it's bulkier also. And there are a lot of people who would like to have such a bike, but you need some motor also probably to help. Mm. Since with four wheels, you, you, we are talking about three kilos more or four kilos more. Mm. And it has to be also more stable. And I would like to show how we have made some solution around it. Okay. So. How about we start taking a look at what some of the innovations that you have uh, put together? Yeah? Sure. All right. When you try to um, build a vehicle, you have to ask yourself what purpose is it for? So we thought it might be something between sporty and um, all day use. And so what you go for anyway is the low weight and the aerodynamics. So talking about aerodynamics, it is, um, since we start here in front, um, it is the, the leading edge, we call it. And the leading edge, mm -hmm. it has to be very round. And so the streaming will follow anyway. If you make it very round, it will follow anyway. You don't, you don't, you're not engaged with more resistance when it is round. Mm -hmm. If you make it too edgy with side winds, you're gonna have some problems. And since we want to lower the weight, we have to make it as short as possible. So it gets a little bit bulky. It looks like um, a big fat dolphin, let's say. And so we go a little bit further. Here we've got uh, the front wheels. Front wheels is a front suspension that we changed from uh, 2CV, you know, the Citroën, which has got some longitudinal props that move up and down. But there we have in, when it, went through the bends, you have a lot of movement there, which is which comes from the from these lateral forces. So we had to change that. So this was my last work I did on the vehicle to improve it. And what we learned is when you have comes when you have side winds, mm -hmm. you can check here what happens. Now on the side wind it pushes against here and it doesn't move. Very stable. It's very stable. So when we want to address uh, the, when we, we want to become more stable with the Velomobile, um, it really helps when you have four wheels instead of three. Mm -hmm. But with the front wheels, you have also the steering, which is being pushed by road, which is bent. You have a bent road, and it always searches when when the steering is not perfect. It searches. The outer, the, other side. The, the other side yeah, of the, the road. The crown of the road, yes. Exactly. Yeah. And so when you run on the road and you have strong winds, let's say in Holland or even in Switzerland, we have also strong winds, it helps to keep the, um, the, the, the vehicle as round as possible 
And on the other side here, the, the, the streaming should, should disattach. We didn't study that perfectly, but since the steering has improved, the whole behavior of the vehicle has improved on the road, which is the main thing. Now we're going, stepping a little bit more backwards. All right, that's what I'm doing. Okay. We are here with the rear part of the vehicle, which is still the most serious problem with aerodynamics. Mm -hmm. I'm going to explain it why. Please. We make some, uh, when you have the front wheels, you could cover it. But um, this will, uh, will not help you in everyday use since you have a lot of stones falling into it. And you, are so, you have also the problem that when you have snow, it is trapped in the wheel casing. And when you don't have any covers, it really falls out from itself. Mm -hmm. So, well, I was talking about um, styling and yeah. styling is very important, not only for um, yourself, but also for your potential customers. But since we are a little bit, um, with, let's say, we are not the fastest on the road, we want to, rather to imitate something real classic. And classic means that you have to have straight lines and long uh, curves, and this ends then all in a very, very low um, backside. And you've got here um, a, flat, a flat plate here. And then you have all of a sudden the idea that you want to try out how that works in reality sure. so we found a stretch on a road that goes really straight for five kilometers and what we did is um, we rode with 40 kilometers per hour constantly and then we push with some um, power meter front we have some pedal power meters mm -hmm. and they work quite well and they are quite comparable and if you do a lot of these sessions going five kilometers up five kilometers back and you don't have any wind this is the precondition. Yeah. Then you end up having a lot of data yeah, that you put in a mm. spreadsheet, and then you can uh, find out about your CD as long as yes. you know what your rolling resistance is. So what we found out is actually, it has a comparable um, CD value like a car, which is quite nice for a Cabrio. But if you compare that with, a, let's say, with the M yeah. M9, mm. then you'll end up having double as much air resistance mm -hmm. which is well you have to chat for yourself what you want to say What's about that right? but yeah. for me as a an, yeah. as a, um, a rider an old an old rider I have to say but um and so, a racer uh, and a racer of course right, let's yeah move, let's keep that in mind an, an old an old rider yeah. but a young racer okay no, right, that's hard. right 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 okay so um i i was not satisfied with that okay. uh, what i did is um i i got myself and this was a quite challenging thing, a CFD program, oh, wow. CFD open foam. And um, you have to do a lot of um, reading about that. You have to listen a lot to a lot of um, YouTube videos and you'll find out finally how it is operated. And we did that for a certain case, which was taken from a, mo from a motorcycle. And then you can find out you're sticking, instead of the motorcycle, stick in your own vehicle, which is notably being planned by um, by um, CAD, mm -hmm. CAD program. Mm -hmm. So the CAD gives you a full um, envelope of what is outside and exposed to the air. Okay, okay. And so we found out that there's a chance to improve that for more than, we, we leave out some 30% with the overall resistance when we adapt, I was just talking about the aerodynamics now, not yeah. about the rolling resistance. Yeah. We can um, um, improve that for 30%, that means it has just 70% of the aerodynamic, uh, of the air, air resistance, resistance yeah. as we see it now, okay. which is pretty much of an improvement. It's a great improvement. And yeah. this leads us somewhere in between the, 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 it's much better than some other four wheelers, but it is still um, above that what you could reach with a three-wheeler. Okay. Charles, let's, let's take a look at how you've designed the wheel pants here. What do we got? Well, the idea of having these wheel pants is just to, to keep to that idea of having a classic vehicle, which is covered like the Duesenberg or something like that, uh -huh. which covers it all, um, but it has to be disattachable just to, um, to remove all these little pebbles that jump into it right. or the snow in Switzerland. So, so let's, yeah, let's take a look. show that. Even... Okay, we just take that off here. 
And this one is basically just attached by um, by two magnets here, mm. which are pretty strong though. And these magnets prevent it, doesn't prevent it from falling down, but they just keep it in position. We screw it on. And so what you see here is the rear wheel, which can then be um, also disattached in case of puncture. Right, so you have access, you have access. easy access now, and it's a, it's a great design. Exactly, and they just weigh, they are so super light. Uh -huh. uh, and I think they are also something that has to be taken into account when you go to production because they're very, very expensive to produce, though. So. Right, it's all done by hand right now, right? It's and still done by hand, and, and, and it, you will end up always doing that by hand, but right. um, this is something a... quite complicated yeah. that is fully attached here, and yeah. if you, I still snap it on again. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's it, huh? Easy. <laughs> all right, Charles, how about having a look on the inside? How does this all work? Let's see how it opens up. Yeah, why not? So this is some something that I really that we really thought a long time about it, just to improve the way you get into these vehicles. Like when you just try to slide in here, it is so narrow and people start complaining about. There are some real good artists in that, but um, we try to improve that a little bit. So I snap it open here. Push it off. These are the snaps here that hold it. Yeah, yeah and notably these snaps has been, have been made with um, nylon, with polyamide. And we just, um, there's a good chance that you can do these things all with computer. And then you send it to some factory, something somewhere abroad. I don't want to know it if it's in China or Vietnam. You can also send it to, in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. And we'll do that. We'll, we'll concentrate on European production, of course. Um, but these ones are, they, they just cost something like five bucks. Okay. And you can make it yourself. And when you hear about the sound here. Click, 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 and click. There. And it is stable. It can't be opened by wind. If, even if it falls over, it won't open. Huh? Nice. All right, let's pop that open. And maybe we can look at the uh, hinging mechanism. Right. That, that looks interesting. Carbon fiber. <laughs> this looks very, very big though. And it is. And it's, it has just show, been shown that it is sufficient to have such a large, such a small um, friction plate here inside. So we are not using the whole big thing here. It would be it wouldn't be necessary to keep that open. Okay. Well, if you some advantage of the four wheeler is surely that you can not only put some uh, big cases with beers in, like it is also. Um, well, it, you can do that, but it is also feasible just to have some single, single um, backpack mm. and you just stick Passion it in. in. Uh. And the main thing that we wanted to, uh, just something that really allows you to do that is not having the chain in the center. Mm. And some of our competitors, or competitor, I'm not competing with them, so and this is just a prototype. Yes. <laughs> um, like they have uh, the, the chain in the middle. So okay. we, we, we try to put that obstacle in the rear, in the, in the tr trunk here, out of the way. So you won't see a chain here because the chain is hidden inside Wait, so the vehicle. Is it, is it offset or it is, is it just offset. below? The drive chain is, um, it con it consists of uh, one primary chain and there's no tensioner here. It is just, you can uh, move the, the pedal, the pedalry to and fro, front-wise and back-wise, you can accommodate some people with a size of around two meters in here, just pushing that forward. And as I said, it is very round mm -hmm. and there's enough space for all the feet. Yep. Um, what we have here is the, the chain goes to the middle here. And you see, I'm pushing that now backward. And there's a, an intermediary stage here on, on a pole that goes on the out, in the outside, and there you've got two liners, two um, longitudinal props here. This is part of the structure, which gives him gives it a, a structural rigidity, mm -hmm. and that is necessary for a four wheeler, and so it gives also a chance to hide the chain here, and there the chain has to be tensioned here. You see here, there's a tensioner somewhere hidden. But well, the tension is not in the back, 
but it is here in the central part. So there's a tensioner who tensions the chain parallel, in parallel, it goes forward, and so it ensures that the chain is always tensioned. Mm -hmm. And in the back, we don't have any chain tensioner. So we, we um, dismounted these two functions. Um, we don't have any derailleur in the back. We rather have some uh, fork that guides the chain to and fro. Yeah, yeah, we've seen the inline derailleur system Exactly. Like on the Hilgo, right? Uh, the Hilgo has got something similar. Yeah, yeah true. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah. Um, the idea behind this, when you have 20 inch wheels, you don't want to have a derailleur that comes out, that sticks out yeah. in the dirt, and it gets uh, entangled when okay. you drive along a road and things like that. Good. So we we got it straight with that, that fork just pushing the chain to and fro. And this is one thing that is not yet perfect. Okay. And you need a lot of time and to, mock, to do a mock-up to see how that works. And we are still trying to improve that, which is really necessary before you go out even to produce a small quantity of these vehicles. Sure. Now, one other thing I notice in here, Charles, that seems unusual. I see a tiller like you would see right. in many Velomobiles, but the end of the tiller looks a little unusual to me, almost like a steering wheel. What is that? Uh, true. Yeah. Yeah. Another innovation, tell me. Well, uh, <laughs> we, we thought since we're making a four-wheeler, um, we try to invite all the, the car drivers who have the habit of not pushing a handlebar, but rather turning some um, steering wheel, as we call it. And then we've got still these Formula One steering wheels, which are quite appealing to me yeah and we equipped so cool. that uh, in a way that we adapted that to uh, so we had to find out the right angle and we had uh, yeah, there's a very simple thing you can also send it to the 3d printer and the 3d printing with with uh, polyamide is very very solid this is hollow and the thing is, you can change a lot uh, the, the, the outer shape according to your wishes quite easily with the CAD. Good. Yeah, keep going, yeah. Okay. And you can get the width. So yeah. this is basically some sort of tiller. You can move it to and fro, and probably you could also attach it here with a, with some sort of, uh, yeah, something clamp that's a clamp or yeah. to retain it. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And Pretty good. And you see, radius the, yeah, it's got a quite a, uh, quite a nice radius, so you can turn between two obstacles of eight and a half meters. Huh? Um, even if you have, like here, you see the 42 millimeters, they're basically 42, but now on these uh, rims, it, they are 45. Okay. So the aim was to have, to be able to mount some 50 millimeters tires on it. All right. So it gives you much more um, st stabili stability also, sure. and they roll quite nicely. It's not my favorite to do electrics. I don't know that much about it. Okay. I'm rather the one who's talking about aerodynamics and things like that. Right. I can't even do the structure. The structure has been built by Birkenstock bicycles. Mm -hmm. I have to emphasize. The thing you see here wouldn't look the same if I would have done Getting it myself. Himself. Yeah. So um, you, you better have your, your friends and your companies that you know and that you rely on. And the whole structural thing, the structural work, the handcrafting was done by Birkenstock Bicycle, Speed Bikes, Points, C, Yes. Yes, good. Nice, nice proposal there, yeah. <laughs> okay. So what I want, still want to talk about is another friend of mine, Wolfgang Schröppel, who is doing the electronics. Okay. Since I said I'm not expert in electronics. Yeah. I know how to stick in the battery, <laughs> but then, moreover, we had the, the, the final aim to have just one single switch, piece, yeah. switch, and it's something like a joystick. Ah. So it is not for playing any games. But can, you, can you get that from yeah, there? Sure, we do got this joystick. This is a joystick here, and if I push it up here, you see, there's the front light coming on. So. Um, Having a nice front light is very important for Velomobiles. Mm -hmm. Not even that you that you get um, that you get aware, 
um, that people see you on the road. The main thing is actually not to disturb other people being in the traffic. And if I just switch it on, you'll see here, there's that really small angle in which you can, in which this uh, light is directed. Mm -hmm. Now we have something like uh, 20 watts on. And if I switch that again, we have here now 10 volts, watts, and now we have five watts. And the thing is the whole electronic guides this process. You don't have another lamp. It is just the whole thing is in the, the microprocessor in here. So it adjusts the, the wattage that's going the, to the lights and that handles the entire handles intensity all. of the lights. Right. Nice. So it can still have some, yeah. have some other lights being operated. Mm -hmm. Now there's that front light, which is, um, um, is a security light that is constantly on. Mm. But if you use the, the blinker, or mm -hmm. what is it called? Yeah, yeah. blinker. You see, the, the front light stopped, and it's just the blinker on. This is according to your street regulations. Yeah. So you want really to follow that as long as we can. Of course. <laughs> now on the other side is the same, and you see also in the back there's the, the blinker. And if you push it on both sides, you see both blinkers, so it's something like an alarming system yeah, yeah. if you got stuck somewhere. A hazard, <laughs> hazard, a hazard okay, yeah. yeah. And what we did here is also, uh, Wolfgang did it, uh, wasn't my, myself as I said. Um, he just arranged that there's very, very low current in here, mm -hmm. and it goes dry to the microprocessor. So it's a microprocessor which switches on the leading current. Uh, there's the strong current that makes the light, these, these 20 watts I was talking about. Okay. So what we still have is, um, yeah, there's a, now, ah, now you see. You uh, made him jump. Yes, and the yeah. echo you also heard. <laughs> yeah, right, from the other side of the building. Yeah, Obviously. right. So um, just to be back to the front of the vehicle, let's talk about ventilation probably. Ah, the ventilation, yeah. yes. So what we have here is um, the, the main opening of the ventilation. Um, when you want to build a very fast vehicle, it's not important how big this, uh, this part is, this frontal part is, as much as you, um, when you just let the air come in, it is regulated by the way it can come out, of course, and you have a lot of pressure inside the, the, the vehicle that you can build up, so it has to be quite big, just in case that uh, you're, you um, drive very slowly. And there, the, um, the ventilation, there's a tube that goes straight up here. And we call it the python because it looks like a snake. Python, yes. Python, yeah. Yes. Okay. And so what we finally would like to do is still to have another tube here that goes straight into your face. Sure. When you want to get rid of heat, you have to cool your face and your neck and your throat yes. and everything else, like legs, is not so important. Right. So I hope that it's well ventilated and in case we could also mount a ventilator into it. But um, well, yeah, we'll see how we'll end up having next summer, which is hopefully a little bit more sunny than we and have it now. Long. Is it a, a year, a couple of years? What do you think? Well, we, we start continuing to be building a second one of these vehicles, which is notably will be three or four kilo, kilos less heavy. Mm -hmm. We'll improve the on and the aerodynamics. And so this vehicle can be used as an electric vehicle, I think. Mm -hmm. And we have also the chance, I didn't show that, but we, I have a, a motor that can be equipped, will, uh, will be equipped within a two weeks time, I think, from now. Mm -hmm. and so we're gonna see how that works out. That's, that's one threat to follow. Okay. But um, I'm afraid that um, when I just want to push it with my own muscles, like we are calling ourselves human powered vehicles. That's right. And so we put a lot of emphasis on our own power. It has to be more lightweight. So we're doing that a second, um, uh, second um, prototype of that kind which looks a little bit different. It won't be that, that antique anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not Greek anymore. It is, it is rather um, futuristic. Sure. And so after having that, we're going to measure that. What we are going to measure with um, my uh, power meter pedals, again on the stretch around the lake. 
I will find out if it's really better. Then we'll dare to go for a smaller series, I hope. Okay. And we're talking about these smaller series. Like and a, a, a prototype, a few out It's a there, prototype, yeah. and I guess um, it will be appealing to a lot of people. I think so. And the thing is, I invested a lot of money into that vehicle yeah. just to get it to that this, stage. Yeah. So from now on, I promise to myself <laughs> That, um, don't go crazy. Don't, don't go crazy about that. It's <laughs> right. not like investing money. Yeah. It's rather to have something nice that um, people also can afford. Right. I've got something like three, six, seven people who really want to buy such a vehicle at a quite feasible price, let's say. Right, right, right. I'm, I'm not talking about the price now, but I'm talking about these five vehicle series. And I think it is important that you try out with some people who are really passionate. Right. So they can report on, on you what what can be improved. The what test pilots, essentially, yeah? Exactly. And then you exactly. get the information back and right. you can improve the vehicle further. I can yourself. improve and that's very necessary if you want to go for a, let's say, 50 vehicle series. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to some people from, from Velomobile World, notably to Jan. Yes. And he said to me, if you want to make such a vehicle, make it simpler. And we have any way to make new um, new um, um, molds. New molds, molds. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you want to make yeah. a new mold, yeah. we do that anyway because it is too much of a risk to ruin the old molds. Yeah. And we, we're talking about 50 vehicles. Okay. All and right. so uh, if you yeah. want, don't want to have 50 customers being not satisfied with yourself standing in your garden. Right. And <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you get yourself a dog. <laughs> right, that's what you need. All right, that's fair enough. I get it. So, all right, well, amazing developments here, and I love what you've done. Uh, this is going to appeal to a lot of people, and, and so many people are already interested in the work that you do. So, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. We are here with my friend Kirsten from Haza, and it's nice to see you again, Kirsten. Yes, thank you. It's a long time ago, so. We're proud to be here again. It's good to be back. So we are going to talk about what Haza has brought to uh, Spetsi today and uh, focus in maybe on one particular thing. So what do we want to talk about today? Um, we're going to talk about for first about the Pinot Cargo. So in uh, Europe and Germany, um, cargo bikes are very famous at the moment. I don't know how it is in the United States, but uh, people think about how to um, go take more ro uh, rides on bikes and not on cars and how to transport things, so, yeah. And so, by way of cargo bikes, what do you have? What did you bring? Yeah, we have the Pino, which um, you might know, maybe, I don't know, it's a, it's a tandem and a cargo bike, so you can go with two people on it, like here is some pedals. And um, if you take away the bag, you can go with two people. And if you go for, uh, yeah, if you want to go shopping and not to have those babies inside, but some fruits or whatever, you can put this bag on it. So it could be cargo or it could be a child carrier. Yes. And of course, famously, this, is ha this has the standard upright seat and then the recumbent seat in, in the front. Oh, yes. And what about uh, assistance? Uh, do you have a, a motorized version as well? Is this mm -hmm. motorized? Yeah, this one is motorized. It has a Shimano Steps motor on it. And I think if you have a cargo bike, this is really useful because, yeah, yeah you want to carry something. Right, it's very practical. Uh, tell us about it. Yes. Because, you know, if all you... Oh. <laughs> You're all right, sir. It's not the end of the world. It's fine. <laughs> we can do it one more time. <laughs> That's, it's good. That's all right. Okay. I thought he was going to have a heart attack. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, Kirsten. So tell us... It. Good? Yeah. Tell us about the Cat Weasel updates. Oh, yeah. The Cat Weasel. You know, if you go on a, on a Delta trike or on a tricycle, um, you always want to have some comfort. And we want to make it more comfortable with the various seat. And um, yeah, it shows you can, how that works. I can show some, some details because you can take away some of those little cushions who make it even, or you can really make it like it fits yourself the best. So you can put it under or take it away. So like here, that's also. Okay. Yeah. So you customize the padding to mm -hmm. your particular back and how that's you feel it. comfortable. Yes, that's nice. it. Okay. Yeah. And so, what else is? Yeah. What else? Then we have to go over to the Lepers <laughs> to another bike. 
Let's do that. <laughs> then finally, Kirsten, uh, we have an e-assist to talk about on this uh, cat weasel, yes? It's, a, it's quite a lepus, but lepus or cat weasel, it's the main, main basis, the same basis. But um, we have the Bafang motor now for new here in it because some people need some more support, especially mm. handicapped people. And this is really cool that we have it now. Um, yeah. So As yeah, so tell us a little bit about this. So this is the this is the kind, the Bafang is what you put on uh, to motorize all of your cat vehicles now, yeah? Um, no, we also still have the Shimano Steps motor, but you can choose as a customized version the Bafang motor also. All right, and one thing that sticks out in my mind mm -hmm. about uh, Haza is your uh, accommodation for those folks that you mentioned mm -hmm. that have various sorts of uh, disabilities mm -hmm. that you can uh, that you can put together pedals and, and all sorts of... Can you talk a little bit about some of the things that you do? Sure. Because um, you can... Um, for, for each of our bikes, we have a lot of accessories, like this is, for example, the, um, the, the, the pedals that give a little support so that you don't um, fall... Slip, your feet don't, don't slip, slip down. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, one-hand operation so that you get both um, uh, brakes on one side or um, a head assist... So our, what, whatever you need, there's very many possibilities. You can check them out on our website. Sounds and, good. Yeah. All right, Kirsten, thank you so much for spending a little time with the Laid Back Bike Report and showing us around the Haza booth. It's so great thank to you. see you again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We are here uh, at the HB Velotechnic booth at Schwetzi with my good friend Heiko. Heiko, how are you? Thank you. I'm fine. I uh, hope you enjoy the, the show. Um, after a long break, we're very happy to be here. And um, actually, we're the biggest booth we ever had at the Spitzi um, to make it a success. And um, I think it's quite impressive. So why is this the biggest booth? What is there some celebration that this is uh, representing? Uh, actually, uh, the celebration is that the Spitzi is living again after two uh -huh. years of break. Um, we have another reason to celebrate. Um, HP Velotechnic is in its 30th year now. We didn't make it as a big party as um, the 25th uh, anniversary, but yes, we're in the 30th year now. And we're looking forward to the next 30 years. Uh, as you can see, we have a little screen where we um, show some ideas of our uh, engineers. We always playing around with ideas, with concepts. Um, there's never a guarantee that we realize it. Our engineers are free to be crazy. And um, what we want to do in our, 30th, in our 30th year now, to be prepared for the next 30 years mm. and to prepare the future of HPVs, of HP Velotechnic, but also of human-powered vehicles, future mobility, um, we are interested in getting in to touch again mm -hmm. with our customers, with consumers. Um, we want to know what their needs are, what their wishes are. And so on our birthday, we want to invite you, invite you, invite you um, to come up to us, show up to us, talk with us, talk about your ideas, talk about your needs, talk about your wishes and uh, then we can see what we can do. Okay, great, Heiko. Let's uh, maybe take a little tour of the booth and see some of the products you guys are showing You're here. Welcome. And I'm happy to show you around. Sounds good. Okay, Heiko, so let's start maybe with uh, the two-wheeler version of what HP sells. What do we got going here? Yes, actually, um, I'm very happy to show you two-wheelers because um, HP Velotechnic started with a two-wheeler um, with a, with a street, yeah. mm -hmm. street machine, which you see over here, the orange one. And um, of course, the majority of sold bikes is trikes, but we still love our two-wheel two -wheel bikes. We have a foldable one, the Grasshopper. We have a travel, an um, explicit travel recumbent bike, the Speed Machine, our classic. Uh, we have the Speed Machine, a race here touring bike. And um, we still develop here and our newest, our newest model um, was the, is, a, is an S-Pedelec, 
So with assist up to 45 kilometers per hour. Okay, so we have a new we have a new speed machine that's the next yes. version. Let's take a look at that. Okay, fine. Yeah. Where are we at with the speed machine today? Yes, um, last year we um, launched the speed machine 2.0 um, as an S Pedelec. S Pedelec is uh, a bike with assist up to 45 kilometers per hour or 28 miles per hour, and. Um, what you see here is the first speed machine with a type approval, uh, EU type, type approval. So as far as I know, there's no other recumbent bike having a type approval as S Pedelec. And of course necessary for an S Pedelec is, um, is some, some features. So it's um, very richly equipped with a, um, with a kickstand and um, fenders and of course the motor system, sophisticated. We have a luggage rack um, in any case because we need it for the license plate. And so this is a very nice packed bike. And um, you will soon see a test. Uh, believe me, it's like flying. It's, it's Millennium Falcon. I really, really, <laughs> really like riding this bike. All right, uh, Heiko, we are gonna start talking about three-wheelers yeah. and the Gecko. Yes. Um, actually, Tell me. Yeah, the Gecko line is um, is the second big line in our in our portfolio product portfolio. Um, Gecko trikes are very nimble. They are not not suspended, but uh, still comfortable, and um, you can quickly fold them. Most of them, except except this one, <laughs> but. Um, the Gecko FX20 and Gecko FX26 are uh, can be folded very quickly. Very interesting um, for US customers is that we uh, is, um, we can deliver um, our US special US edition again. Uh, so we introduced this uh, some years before, had some delivery problems. Now the US Gecko edition is available again. Um, this means you have an a very attractive price on these on these um, trikes, and um, of course limited equipment. But you can equip it with um, fenders, or with a headrest, or with a seat cushion. So we have a comfort line and a performance line and a sport line. Um, you best check out on our website. Um, you, um, in the Gecko, on the Gecko sites, on the English Gecko sites, you will see a little section on the US edition. We created already a page um, with, with all the information. And um, ask your dealer about the US Geckos, they know about them. Heiko, we now are moving up the line in trikes here uh, to this beautiful Scorpion. And you're going to tell us uh, about the latest with the Scorpion. What do you got going here? Yes, actually the uh, Scorpion is our, let's say, premium line of trikes. They are um, um, suspensed, always in the back. Some are fully suspensed, or most are fully suspensed, uh, with a very sophisticated McPherson suspension. Um, people who know HP Velotechnic know about our Scorpion series, as well, uh, of course. And they are also foldable, not as quickly as uh, the Geckos, and you have to remove the seat. but. Um, you have the, the, the option to exchange, interchange the seats. So we have a sporty hard shell seat, we have a regular mesh seat, we have this um, premium premium seat uh, with, with um, adjustable, adjustable um, seat. Um, padding? Seat, no, 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 yes, the padding as well, but uh, the, the uh, seat platform and the, and the backrest are, um, can, can be adjusted in the angle independently from each other. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a very sophisticated um, trike series. Um, also, the Scorpions are the, the most diversified um, lineup. Um, here you see something very special. This is a Scorpion FS20, the trike which uh, Silver Halpern rides. Um, and this one has a as it has a hand cycle mast. Um, you know this, we didn't in invent hand cycling, but uh, we want to make it HP style, which means there's no, there's no big chain wheel in front of your face. And um, so this was our latest development. It's also available for the Gecko, Gecko series. It's just on the Scorpion to, to show here. Uh, so um, the hands on cycle gives, gives um, 
hands on cycle as we call it gives people um, with disabilities the ability to cycle again of course of course I guess one last update to the scorpion you wanted to talk about is uh, a hub mechanism yeah yeah um, actually on the 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 big news show for us is the Eurobike, which will happen in uh, one and a half months or something like this. Uh, so on, on Spezi, we, we don't show the news, um, except on the gearing side, we introduced the, um, the uh, Enviolo. We used the tracking automatic, so the high-level Enviolo uh, shifting. I don't know whether you're familiar with this. Um, it's a hub gearing. And it's not a regular hub gearing. Um, the, the main characteristic is that it shifts steplessly. So you don't have gears in, in the sense, you have a lowest and a highest gear. And in between, the, um, the transmission will, will um, develop mm -hmm. without steps, like, like you know from a chain, chain gearing or whatever, derailer gearing or whatever. Um, Yes, and it can also shift automatic. I think you will like it. I know people who already rode it from competitors or other um, brands. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, I'm very optimistic that it will be a very, very good option. A good option for you guys. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, Heiko, uh, thanks for bringing us up to date on everything going on at HP Velotechnik. And thank you so much for sponsoring the Laid Back Black Report here at uh, Spezi. You guys are always wonderful about support of our show and everything we do, so we appreciate that. Thanks, pal. Yeah. Thank you for bringing word to the people and for your visit at our booth, and um, thanks to you all for watching. Okay, thanks. We are here with my pal Yimte from Inner City Bike. Hi, Yimte. Yeah, hello. <laughs> hello to you all. It's, yeah. it's so great to, uh, to see you again. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, Yimta's going to give us a little update on what's going on with Inner City Bike and their amazing Velomobiles. Yimta, what do you have? Yeah, we have the, the new Tuna bike. It's, it's based on the, the FXL, which we still make, but it has some new features. For instance, uh, the nose cover. Get, I'll get no, out of your way here. Yeah, nose cover is magnetic, so easy accessible. You can uh, store also luggage in front and uh, close it easy. Mm -hmm. and, a very nice feature is it has closed it has closed wheel boxes for extra stability and speed, but the maintenance is, is sometimes a trouble. But we we have solutions for that. We can we can open them. Oh wow! And f full access to all the technical parts, and it's it's done in a minute. Uh, closed again. Easy. Yeah. Put the headlight a bit higher for, be for better view on the road. And there's standard uh, some sound. It's, it's, more so it's more friendly than blow the horn. So the driver has yeah. to stand up, lean over, no, and no, oh no, he can do it from in the cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a little rope. There you have it. Okay. <laughs> and the, the, seat, the seat is uh, easy adjustable with straps. Uh -huh. And you can also take it out. I put, use it as camping gear also. Yeah. Okay. And now we have standard uh, Kellerman rear lights. They are approved for motorcycles on the road, so it's very good visibility, mm -hmm. safety. Yeah, they're so small, but yeah. they show up. So, yeah, in yeah. the Netherlands you ride on cycle paths. But we cycle to here and on the, on the German right. roads and the Swiss roads, you feel safer with lights on. Right. Sure. Especially sure. Friday, it was rainy and misty. Yeah, yeah it wasn't yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. We have more interesting things. Well, more see. <laughs> I want to see all the interesting things. But it's, it's not about the construction, it's about the derrière. It's uh, the Supra Drive, it's actually it's come from Canada. It's made for mountain bikes, but it's very suitable for velomobiles too. The special thing is that there's no chain tensioner here, oh. but it still can move to the big cocks. When you have the chain tensioner in the Velmobile, it's in the way, you have less room for it. Mm -hmm. And now you can easily mount it. And the thing is, it's, if you have a 12-speed drive, you can only have a single 
normally your own single chain ring in front. Mm -hmm. But we can have a big one and a small with a special chain tensioner. So we, we can have a, a gear ratio of 1000%. Oh wow. That's unique. Yeah. And it's running, it's running very light. You, you feel no friction in the chain tension. It's and in the Fermobile in front, there's a lot of room, so you, you can use it. Uh, the chain tensioner slides when you shift. Oh. Oh. It's, it has a lot of potential. So next year we come with a thermobile with this system. That's what I was going to ask. When you go uphill, <laughs> no trouble. Right. So this is uh, going to be on future of uh, future velomobiles that you make. Yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. We we go back with a 20-inch rear wheel for more luggage room. Uh -huh. Aha. And, and then have this option. Three three the same tires. It's all, all nice. very useful. Good. And a gear ratio of 1,000%. Yeah. In the Netherlands, you don't need it. No. But, but some people want right. to drive here in Switzerland and Germany. All right, so EMT has shown us the amazing things here at Inner City Bike and always interesting developments. EMT, you do wonderful work. So thank you yeah. once again for being on the Laid Back Bike thank, Report. Thank you for visiting us. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, okay. Guys, we are here at the Inventor Lab at Schweitzi, uh, where there's all kinds of, uh, of amazing uh, uh, innovations on bikes, and we're here with one of the developers. What is your name? My name is Johannes Ott, and I developed the articulated bike Zidane. <laughs> That's very good. So, can, and tell tell us about it. Zidane is a bike. All the technique. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Go here. Zidane is a bike where all the technique is in the front part included. The chain, the crankset, uh, chain, two brakes, I have two brakes here in the front part, one brake here and one brake here, and it's, uh, it's a little bit tricky to drive it, because if you sit on, you have a self-centering effect, and your weight pushes the wheel in the straight, like this, and you are steering with the legs, hmm? and during the drive you can make all you want with your hands you like, <laughs> you can make SMS to drink something or maybe also to push with your arms while driving. Yeah. The balance is very so, difficult, isn't it? You have the, to practice and practice. In yeah? the beginning, the balance is very difficult, but if you are used in it, and it is, if you have 500 kilometers, you are very good used in it, it's no problem to any other bike also. Okay, very nice. And the, nice, the thing is, if all the technique is here, no chain is on the back wheel. You are complete free in the design of the heck here. You can make a box or a platform in or anything else. How you want. This is beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs> Looks perfect. I love that. Gabeltechnik und die Antriebsstimme von 53 Grad N. Es wird ausnahmsweise vorne eine Luftfederung geben. Alles andere würde wirklich sehr schwer werden. Und hier wurde so das Schaumding von, von, von dem, von dem Schwimmgürtel von dem Sohn. Genau.
are here at Katanga with my pal Stefan. Stefan, how are you? I'm fine. Hello. Nice to see you. It is so great to see you again in person. And we're going to talk about a couple of very important products that Katanga makes, starting out with the Wow Velomobile. So uh, let's, uh, Stefan, talk about the, the Wow in terms of where it fits in the Velomobile world. What type of Velomobile is this? Who is it for? Yeah, so the WOW is a film uh, developed in the start of the uh, 2000s. I took it over, Katanga took it over in 2011. We have continued to develop it. And what is specific on the WOW is that uh, you can remove the, the nose, you can remove the tail. So uh, it allows a very good access uh, to the film mobile. This is very specific of the WOW. What is also specific is that you can put almost any type of gearing uh, any type of A assist. Uh, so it's a very flexible Velomobile which allows a lot of possibilities. And then depending on how you configure it, you have a very sportive Velomobile. This is for instance a very sportive, completely carbon. Um, and then you can also have a more comfortable Velomobile with Kevlar, Roloff, A assist. So that's specific from the world. Right. It's, uh, so it's incredibly flexible. You can do almost anything with it. Yeah, That's so it's also the, the fact that it's such a uh, product that is so mature, allowed us to filter out all the child diseases. And today, uh, often you see that the WOW is the one which is chosen uh, for long trips. Uh, so for instance, the, the, the Sun trip was won by the WOW in 2021. So that's, that's for the WOW. Yeah. Very good. And uh, production-wise, I think you told me that things are catching up, catching up a bit. You're doing them a little bit faster. So if someone orders a WOW, how long until they can have a WOW? Yeah, so we uh, organize production and for white WOWs we can react really fast because we have prepared already some, some white WOWs in stock. Uh, we don't put all the options on it uh, and uh, it's possible to have it ready two weeks after order for instance. Yeah? Uh, for other colors it can also go fast. I lately received an order from Canada, uh, 20th of March and 20th of uh, April he had it in front of his house. So uh, this was one month. It's, I cannot uh, promise this always, but uh, normally two months, three months, max. Okay, yeah. that sounds good. Doesn't take long. The other major product that you guys produce is this amazing quad called the Pony 4. Tell us about the Pony 4. Yeah, so we started, I think, three, four years uh, ago to develop this product. Uh, the Pony 4 is a, a, a bike that is meant to, to offer solutions for much more people. So much broader product. So uh, typically uh, this means much more stability. So the four wheels of really a big stability uh, and also more cargo space. Yeah? Um, so here we see the, the light and short version. Um, so uh, you have to try it to really feel how comfortable and easy it is. Yeah? Uh, it is full suspended. So. These are leaf springs who also hold the wheels, so it's very simple uh, and efficient uh, construction. Uh, you have a pinion uh, gearbox with one chain to the rear axle, uh, so very simple. Uh, yeah. What is this, uh, what is this uh, suspension made? Is yeah. that carbon fiber? Um, the carbon fiber uh, mm. that you see on top is more for the aesthetic, but in, in reality it's, uh, the effect is uh, glass fiber. Okay, this, this fiber part. glass is yeah. the... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been developed by our, our colleague and uh, it works really very well, yeah. Okay, and so maybe this is a good time to talk about the config, the different configurations of the, yes. because it is, you talk about flexible, this is what Katanga is all about, yeah. flexibility yeah. I'm learning. Yeah. Tell me about the other configurations. Yeah. So um, one difference is the, between the short frame and the longer frame, yeah. This is a short frame, the longer frame is 30 centimeter longer, yeah. Um, another difference is uh, E-Assist. Yeah, it's okay. So you can put uh, E-Assist and the engine on it because as, as soon as you use cargo and you have hills, uh, you need some more power. Yeah? Um, and then there are applications. Uh, if you go to our website, then you will see uh, myself driving with it. I have a big dog and I need to go to work with my big dog every day. So I use the pony the uh, last three years every day now uh, with the big dog uh, behind me. Um, the camera is maybe not seeing this, but you can take two children here 
and purchases with you. Uh, together in a very stable bike, so uh, not, not every bike with child seat is stable, but this one is. And then uh, another application that maybe you, you can test out later is the, the trailer. So this even increases the cargo uh, capacity by, by a factor three. So we try to, to build a lot of options around this bike and uh, the sales are developing very well, but we are still not known by most uh, of the people. So I count on Gary to, to share, uh, to, to help us to share this product in the market. Yeah, Stefan, your problems are over. After this video goes out, the world will know. Pony 4 and WOW is what Katanga is. And one last thing, folks. Uh, Stefan and Katanga were kind enough to sponsor the Laid Back Bach Report here at Spetsy. We are so thankful for that. This coverage would not be possible without folks like Stefan doing his support as he has for a number of years. So, Stefan, thank you so much. I thank you too. Yeah. Okay. We are here at a very interesting booth with uh, Josef from Quad Velo. Hello, Josef. Hi. <laughs> it's great to have you uh, show us this amazing Velomobile called the Quad Velo. Uh, tell us a little bit about the company first, if you would. Okay, so it's a Belgium-based company. We are a printed silk board company, but uh, my boss uh, like Velomobiles, so he started this business as a hobby. But uh, seems it will be maybe a big, not as a hobby, maybe right. something bigger. <laughs> we hope it will be something better. Beautiful product. So, all right, let's talk about the Quad Velo. How long has it been in development? Uh, we started the development of the Quad Velo maybe six years ago and seems uh, we are something somewhere at the finish line because uh, we started a batch of small cereal production. So these are from the first batch of the cereal production. But we have also made some prototypes in the uh, last two years. Okay. So you can see some quad velos running in the roads. <laughs> these are from the prototypes and uh, we have some from the cereal here. And your projection for production then for a little bit, for more numbers of quad velos, what do you think about them? Yes, we, are, we would like to increase the production. So we have uh, materials for uh, bigger batches, but uh, we don't have uh, uh, so much human resources for assembly, but we try to solve it somehow because since we have interest for this product, for the, for the show. <laughs> right, you can't see what's right behind the camera there, folks, but there's a long line of people waiting for test yeah, rides, so we'll, we'll, get some, we'll get some views of that. So, yeah. Joseph, can we uh, maybe start taking a closer look at the Quad Velo and tell us uh, about the details? Yes, okay, so it's a four-wheeler vehicle with an E-assist motor, so it's a crank motor integrated in the front. It's a ZF Zax motor with 250 watts rated power, uh, which will assist uh, the driver to 25 km per hour. But you can go faster if you have fitness for it. <laughs> uh, it has nine uh, gears on the rear. It has a differential. Uh, we have uh, drum brakes for Starmy Archer drum brakes. And uh, that is our uh, quite new development wooden seat, as you can see. It is uh, adjustable and uh, also foldable, so it's easy to put your luggage or your child behind you. Uh, we also developed a brand new electronic board, the touch screen display here. If you can show it, I'll try to show it to you. It is still under development process but uh, it is working at the moment to switch on the lights, uh, get some notification from the indicator, and uh, we have PIRS, PIRS sensor for human, human, human being detection. So how about uh, maybe uh, suspension, uh, we talk about that? Uh, yes, it has suspension on the front and the rear as well. In the front we have carbon leaf springs, and uh, at the rear we have uh, Rosta elastomers mounted, so it's quite comfortable. The weight is 100 kg and the payload is 200 kg, including the driver. Good information. Good, good. And I, I guess the last thing is, you have some amazing colors on all you, how many colors do you have? Uh, we have five or six colors at the moment, uh, but we may plan to increase it also. 
It depends on the interest as well. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Joseph, for showing us around the Quad Velo. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. I am here with Kira and Bert uh, from Radical Design, and we're going to talk a little bit about Radical Design's booth here uh, at Betsy. Uh, first of all, um, this is your first Betsy, yes? Yes, it's our first Betsy. I mean, we took over Radical Design in 2020 when just the first one was uh, cancelled because of COVID, and another one and another one were cancelled. There were the online ones, which we sent some contribution for, but this is a real first Betsy with a new stand with our staff. So so, uh, yes, we're excited. All right, for the two or three people left out there in the audience who haven't seen our interview from before, could you tell the folks uh, what it is that uh, Radical Design makes? What are the things that you make, Bert? Yeah, no, um, no that's not, uh, not so easy because we have quite a wide spectrum of products, but we all started with the recumbent bags. We probably will see them later, uh, but we have bike trailers, walking trailers, and because of this business, also other companies came to us because they were also interested in developing goods from soft, soft goods and from fabrics. So we also produce a lot of products for others as well. Huh? And then you have to talk about the, the soft, uh, soft goods. Yeah. Right. And you guys make a lot of this in your shop there in the Netherlands, I know. One of the other things that I found interesting uh, that I didn't really know about is you make seats, or at least the fabric parts of the seats for a number of manufacturers, yes. right? Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, actually uh, quite a number of manufacturers. Uh, the main manufacturers we believe which are available in the market for the for the trikes. So uh, it's, um, we have uh, our neighbors here, HP Velotechnique, but we have Haase, uh, uh, which just launched a new comfort seat, which is also a, a, a co-production with us. But we have Azoop, uh, the, the guys from Czech, uh, they also came to us because they, they wanted to have also a nice comfort seat. But it all started with ice, uh, uh, ice trikes, they were the first ones to request for the, the comfort seat, and basically that created our yeah our, our business uh, over there. And uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Kind of yeah, yeah, that's good. So uh, what we're most interested in, our audience is all about recumbent biking and trikes, of course, and that's a I know that's something you guys focus on a lot. Tell us uh, if you could briefly care about the recumbent bags that you make. Why are they better than anything else you can get? And um, yeah, what's the best thing about the Radical Design bags for recumbent? First of all, of course, that they are handmade and designed in the Netherlands, of which we're very proud. They are made in uh, uh, small uh, sessions, so about 12 or 24 in different colors. And uh, some are already, the designs are ready from 10, 15 years. Uh, but slowly also we start to design new bags. So we have a, a line of Aze uh, bags, so for the uh, Pino for the cat weasel, for the trigo, and for the trigo we have two even, a big one and a small one, depending on how much you will shop. Uh, and slowly also we're thinking to redesign our uh, bags, so we're thinking about new colors, new designs. This is all still in process, but we hope somewhere this year later we will launch them in our web shop. That sounds wonderful. So. Uh here, there's, a, there's a three bags I see over there. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about those? Uh, no, especially the Pino. We love that one the most because it's, uh, uh, it's a very comfortable bag for on your Pino, as uh, water bottles, etc., are always quite low on the Pino. Mm -hmm. This one gives the options to keep your phone and your purse, small belongings, and water bottles close to you. So you hang it on the, bag, on the seat mm -hmm. and you have everything at hand. When you go into a shop, you can take it off, click on a leash, and you can just walk into the shop. Okay, that sounds great. Well, I think that's going to probably wrap it up, but before we go, I wanted to thank Bert and Kira so much for supporting us here at the Laid Back Bach Report here at Betsy. They were sponsors, and uh, we couldn't do this without folks like them. So, Bert yes. and Kira, thank, thank you, you so much on behalf of Laid Back Bach Report. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> We're here with Michael from Schwabat. Thank you so much for doing an interview pleasure. with us. Great pleasure. All right. So tell us a little bit about what Schwab is up to these days. What's the latest? So uh, Schwab is always trying to make a tire that fits every guy, every people on the road, um, especially on the Spezi. Um, we haven't been here for like three, four years due to pandemic. And now we're seeing like people having demand for special tires and special sizes, which is crazy, but a lot of fun to see all these special bikes here and the people around. Um, so we are not just here to show our newest products, but we are also here to listen to the customer to see what's the demand and trying to 
fit in new tires with new technologies into this market. So, Michael, this before we start looking at all these products, uh, you brought this up and we talked a little bit off air about the innovation and development that Schwab is involved with uh, to bring these new products. So, uh, how important is that to Schwab? What sort of development do you guys do? So. Um, the newest technological stuff that's coming is coming from the sportive uh, tires, so um, road bike tires, um, gravel, cyclocross, and especially mountain bikes. And these departments are developing new materials, new compounds to make the fastest tire, the lightest tire, or the most grippiest tire. And we in the tour segment are using those technologies to make a normal touring tire, faster, lighter, more durable, and everything. And this is how uh, yeah, we bring in new tires to the market. Sounds great. All right, let's take a look at some of these newer tires, that, especially the ones that uh, are important to our recumbent riders. Yeah. So one of the newest tires we launched it two years ago is the Schwalbe Pickup. Um, as I said, we're using technologies from other um, parts. This is, from the construction side, a mountain bike tire with five to six layers of carcass, depending on the size. Um, it's a tire that's specially made for cargo bikes. We use a very uh, grippy compound, especially for long john bikes that some them without load have like problems with grip on the front end. Um, that's a tire compound that works pretty good below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, like 33 degrees, something like that, or minus 10 degrees Celsius in, in European language. Um, it's a very durable tire, and due to the many layers of carcass, we have a very good puncture protection on the thread in the middle, but also on the side. So if you're going up like um, 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 from the road and to, to how it's said in English, um, the sidewalk. Yes. Yeah, so, so you have a curbs or something. This tire is very stable, also puncture protection. Great tire for, for rough use. So on the, uh, on the protection, on the puncture protection for these things, there are layers inside that are hardened? Is there some material, like Kevlar type of material? No, what so, do you do? So we're using the uh, 67 EPI carcass, which we use in the higher grade tires, but we're using a lot of those layers. And due to that, the tire is very stable and very strong, and the puncture protection also got very strong to this. So these are, these are different special compounds of rubber that you use, yeah? Exactly, also oh, okay. a special compound of rubber, um, but the carcass is like, it's something like a cloth, mm. but a, a nylon cloth. And due to a lot of layers, you get a very thick cloth, which makes it very strong. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good explanation for how you do the puncture proofing. So, yeah. okay. so um, we're also using um, higher puncture protection in tires like the classic Maritime Plus tires. All right. Uh, right. Oh, sorry. There's a oh, cord in here. Uh, the difference from this tire to that tire, we're using um, a rubberized puncture protection, which in this size is five millimeters thick. And this is our Maritime Plus protection. We also call Unplattbar in German which is the flatless. So a lot of things that puncture your tires are quite short, like five mil long or something. And due to thick puncture protection, it doesn't get through the inner tube. So that's a tire that keeps on rolling, it's very durable. People riding like 10, 12,000 miles in one set of tires. So that's a set and forget tire. Right, uh, Marathon Plus, gotta be the number one tire for recumbent riders Absolutely. overall. So the Marathon Plus is a series of tires. We have um, the normal Marathon Plus, which is very slicky, runs very fast on road, but we also have uh, this Marathon Plus tires in more off-road um, versions. For example, on the other side, we can switch over to sure. the Marathon Let's Plus Tour. Okay, so as I said, Marathon Plus Tour is the newest tire in the Marathon Plus series. Also the five millimeter smart car puncture protection. Um, but we got a bit more grippier um, thread pattern, so if people like to drive um, on gravel, um, a bit of mud, it's not a mountain bike tire, but gives you more, more safety on especially like loose underground. Um, the bigger size also have an extra puncture protection on the side, so going up curbs like the pickup doesn't, doesn't uh, kill the tire, also runs on the flatless. Um, nice. And very, something very special, yeah. something you see here on the bike, also here in front is a brand new Marathon um, Evo series tires. We're using a construction and rubber compound that we use from the fastest road bike tires we have. Um, due to this, the tire is very light, still have a pretty good puncture protection, and it's very fast. Uh, we use a very fast rolling compound in the center and a bit softer compound on the side, so if you're going to travel into corners, the tire doesn't slip away 
works great also under wet conditions. Um, and the normal e-bike tires, you can save up to 7% of battery life. So it brings you further. But if you use it on the normal bike, it makes you so fast. It's like you mount this tire and you feel like, wow, my, tire, my bike feels boosted. It's so fast, so quick and saves energy. Uh, great fun tire to ride, even on gravel bikes or mountain bikes. Uh, we go up to 55 millimeters thickness in 28 inches. So you can take a 29 hour mountain bike and ride one of those tires. Uh, due to the tire is very new, we don't have a lot of sizes yet, but we are trying to bring that tire um, also to smaller sizes so other people can advantage from, sure. from this technology. So Schwalbe is using the recycling for inner tubes for some years now, um, but last year we started the recycling for tires. So we are worldwide the first company that can recycle bicycle tires. Um, and we use a special process that takes the materials of the tire. One is a uh, pyrolysis oil, which is used for textile. So companies like Vaude use for sport textile, they use this oil. And we use the recycled carbon back to put it back into our tires. So this is the first time we are able to recycle a tire to the fullest to put the materials in a new tire. Um, we started this last year in Germany and 1600 bike shops are now using this system. So the tires are collected inside of the shop in a big box, which are around 200 tires fit in. And then we bring it to a company in Germany and they do the pyrolysis um, um, process and we buy the recycled carbon back from them to make new tires. And also we are using a lot of um, fair trade rubber. Um, we, we do like about 20 to 30 million tires per year, so we're not able to put the um, fair rubber into every tire. So we're working hard so that we have more um, fair rubber in future to put it in more and more products of us, because like um, we are trying to be more green, more environmental friendly, having healthier products, because uh, each as you know that a normal tire has a lot of chemicals and we're trying to reduce it to the maximum without losing any performance. So we're working hard on that and uh, it will be very interesting what's coming in the next year. Right. So the, the process then is the German uh, bike rider just brings their used tires yeah. when they're all done to their local bike shop, drops it off, and that's exactly. their part. Every bike shop that participates on this program has a big box that fits 200 tires, just can put in the tire. Um, um, the bike shops can take a little fee for the tire, but anyways, most bike shops do that for um, not for recycling, but for throwing away. And uh, yeah, and then these boxes are collected by us and brought to the company uh, in Western Germany, and they do this uh, pyrolysis process. Sounds great. Well, that's a very sustainable way to, to maintain your business. I think that's wonderful. So what also, do we have here? Uh, something special. It's not a tire, but we launched this product last year. Um, a lot of bicycle riders try to clean their bikes up. And um, there are a lot of products which you spray on the bike and rinse your, your bike off. Um, but the thing is like you buy a bottle and it's super expensive. You clean your bike 10 times and then the bottle is empty and then you need to buy a new bottle. This is a new, our bike soap. It looks like a normal soap. Um, it's 100% degradable. Um, you wet in, um, this brush, take a bit off and you can wash up to 100 times your bike with one set of soap. And as soon as the soap is used, you just buy a new soap for a small amount of money, put it back in. Um, the cool thing is you can put it in your pocket. It doesn't like, um, it's not looking, so you don't lose anything. Um, yeah, it's 100% degradable. And even the brush is made from 100% wood and natural um, brushes, so. Very Yeah, we, we're trying our best to, to make the world a better place yeah. just by uh, small steps. And that is very clear from what you've okay. already told me. So. And even though you can even <clears throat> use it to wash your hands, the only thing is you need to, because it takes off all the fat of your skin, you just put it like a, 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 little, back. a little bit back on your skin yeah. like with cream, but yeah. uh, you can wash, Sounds wash good. yourself with it. You can be as clean as your bike. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, Michael, thank you so much well, for showing pleasure. us around. Schwab. Have a good day and see you next time. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool. This is um, the, these are the parts. We, we started with, uh, with that kind. Yeah, with the coil. With the coil and bring it into this. Yeah. And from both sides. And then it's here integrated, Inside. yes. And then the stator, right? Is that yes. a stator? Yeah. And what is very, very um, unique, very unique is this uh, system, because you have the problem 
um, that um, water is coming in. If you if you take your bike outside in winter, and then you come uh, home uh, into your garage, then it's getting warm, and the the water comes there. Mm -hmm. And the water they they makes everything. Mm -hmm. They they do our, our salt yeah. in winter, and then it corrodes, uh, and then it corrodes. Yeah. And this system you can't you can't get it that no water comes in. But what we do that the water comes in is here and goes out. out. Ah. And it goes out because we have here a um, uh, combination. Uh -huh. And then we put this, it's uh, inside here. Okay. It comes out there, you see it yes. here. And then it has is it capillary motion? Yes, yes. It, okay. it goes back. So it's called in German, it's a Druckausgleichssystem, pressure, pressure assistance system or something mm -hmm. like that. And then it, it goes out and then um, you, you have less corrosion in it. So, and then it, that's, that's very important. And if you name like Shimano Dynamos, and you put them out, then you see all this corrosion, and then you can just um, throw it away. So, right. So that's why Sun has the superior hub here. This is why it's a yes, a and superior product. what we also do, we have a five years guarantee. So mm -hmm. in Germany you have two years um, by law, but we say okay, five year warranty. And what we also do, if you have, uh, we get a lot of old dynamos, they are 50, 20 years old. And then we, we put them out and then um, a colleague of mine, Margaret, and also um, Andreas, they repair it. So mm. they, even, they even go inside and put, a, put it there with the hammer and put this magnets, magnets? Yes, yes. Out. And um, then put new in. Or Replace them, yeah. Or if this is, yeah. If this is uh, has a problem, then we just throw it throw away. Throw it away and put a new one. New or that. So, because we have the whole production there, so we can can change it. So. Okay. And what's a what's a bit of problem is that if you have it in a in the here there, then you have to. Um, Put the spokes mm -hmm. out, and then so it's 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 a kind of expensive, but we we do it at the moment. We do it for 40, 50 uh, euro. We don't make money with that, but right. uh, for Margaret, it's very interesting to make it off and look what what happens. So then you you fix the under re, uh, under warranty, and then you actually rebuild the wheel for them. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. Or the normal wheel, we just take new spokes, or yeah. if you can take the old spokes, then it's okay. And and also, it's it's interesting for us because the product is coming back after a long time, and um, because some parts like like this, you know, it also the hub, it, it exists forever. Yeah? Yeah. You, you don't have to throw it away. If you talk about environmental things, yeah, yeah, you you see, to to make this, you need that. Well, you're right. This is the base that it comes from. The base, from. yes. And, Aluminum. And, yes. And then what I want to talk about that it's uh, even if it's expensive, it's worth to to repair it. Right. Be we have the quality there, yes. so that it's worth repairing in the future. Yes. Yeah. That, that's it's that's our yeah. thinking about. No, this is a German thing. Is yes. and it's a, not yes. quite an American thing. It's more disposable. because you can uh, yeah. re recycle it. But right. But anyway. Okay. You only get a uh, 10% money back from the Spene. So, yeah, got it. Okay. Okay. And so maybe we can look at uh, the what the hub actually powers now. Let's look at some lighting systems, okay? Okay. Marcus, here are some uh, um, um, of your amazing lighting systems. Tell us about it. Okay, uh, you see here the Dynamo hub. It's a hub that have you into uh, in the front wheel. And we also produce um, lightning, what it's called, 
uh, front lightning mm -hmm. and back lightning. And um, even if you see if I if I do it like that, you 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 can see it's um, it it makes even if that small thing it makes light that comes from the from the magnets that it's it's uh, like a puff 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 and so it's uh, in the beginning if you are very very slow then it um, it it's it it flips a bit but if you have 10 10 uh, miles per hour then it's normal and here you see it you have this hub and then you have a do you have connectors? We have uh, coax connectors here, so to put it on, because uh, if you have a, a puncture, then it's good to um, easy removal. No. Easy remove it and bring it back on the on the thing, and then you can take this and just make it like that. And then you can connect it uh, with the coax here. And here you have a, you have the connection to the to the front light, and um, from the front light you get the connections to the to the back light, and so that's all. And um, what we have we have different um, different tools uh, to to fix it on the uh, on the bike uh, on the saddle or oh. here you have it on if you have a. Schutzblech, oh. what, um, what's it called? The fender? Yes, and then it's here. Or um, we also have it one uh, integrated in the uh, for the saddle or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. So we have different things. So we work together with the company Busch and Müller, yes. who is also there. Uh -huh. There's a very um, good friendship because of the owner mm -hmm. and the both, and they really have a win-win situation because Busch and Müller is uh, much more bigger. Um, also, they make also automotive, but they, they work together. Nice collaboration. Really. So, yes. and you have inside you have electronic, um, just to to have it a sensor. If it, if you it's dark, then the light goes on, or you 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 put it off. And this is a. I tried. Make it like this. Uh -huh. Here's a magnet inside, and there's a read contact. You know that all all re old relay. It's only just if the um, magnet comes, then it goes together, and that's inside here. And you just have to have it like that, and you can take it like nice. this. And so it's very easy because you have to a good thing that you can make it while you are cycling. That's mm -hmm. very very important, easy, yeah? I think. So we tried really to make it easy, yes. Let's, okay. So, and these are. So in Germany we have the problems that um, uh, there are a lot of pedelecs, and they changed the law. And at the beginning of the pedelecs, every pedelec has uh, his own dynamo, and then they changed the law that it's allowed that they can take the battery, and now you can take the battery, and you don't need. Uh, SON. So what do we do? So we just produce very expensive um, lightning, also to have it for um, for the uh, pedelecs. So we can make some some money with that. Right. Yeah. So anyway, because there's really one direction they sell less and less uh, normal bikes. Yeah. And so we have to think about what we are doing. So that's that's uh, that's so what we have, and we have very different products. We are small. We like manufacturing, and we do a lot of handwork, really handwork. Yeah. In the here inside, there is one um, one part at the beginning, and I do that with the on a manual. Thing, uh -huh. this uh, blech. I just do it. So okay. And so we have a lot of a lot of equipment that you yes, nice, happy, yeah. human power. Very nice. So, so. One big thing at the moment is um, that everybody wants to charge his smartphone. Yeah. And we now invent uh, um, also we 
we showed it last year on the Oreo bike. The best thing would to have an electronic inside and just to, to have a cable and then you charge your thing. While riding? Yes, <laughs> while, while riding. Yeah. So, but this is, uh, this is um, complicated at the moment because then you have also this problem with a uh, thing. So we just want to perhaps integrate it here in the Lightning and then you have this USB and can charge your bike. Yeah. So ah, nice, another and, good idea. Um, the, and if you, if you want to see something what I... So... Okay, that's it. Um, that's it here, what, what we show. This is um, from another company, so you have... Um, this is, this is an Andreas, he's uh, the Hello, master Andreas. of electronic. He Thank was you. He was the first employee it's the first employee is from the beginning there he's he's the master he knows everything so always good to see the master okay yeah, okay and here you <laughs> see um, this thing is uh, is um, who changed the the voltage to USB okay and oh. then you can just take it like this and um, charge Plug your in. phone so nice yeah. But we want to, to do one, this is from another company, but we want, we at the moment, we develop our own with a, um, with a battery system, with an Akku, so that you have permanent thing. Because, um, you know, Paris press Paris. Yes, of course. Yes, and, and they, these riders, they really know, most of them are about 50% or so take our product, because these are our, very good customers, they ride long, they ride at night, yes. and they don't have to time to, to go into a thing and, and charge, charge, and, right. and, charge and, and they really have to be um, independent. And, and I think in, this thing is just, just to be independent, to make your own, yeah, your power. own thing, yeah. your own power. Sure, so makes that's sense. It. Good, okay. all right, Marcus, thank you so much for showing okay. us around. Nice to talk to you. All right, guys, we are here with uh, the famous Charles Henry. Um, for, so what is, what organization would you associate yourself with? I don't even know what to say. Well, actually, we're here with uh, Future Bike, Velomobile Club. Um, so this is a Swiss association, I would say, that um, like in England, you have the, the, um, the British Velomobile Club and things. Um, we here um, represent the whole uh, the whole um, presentation representation of Swiss Velomobiles, like we have here the very oldest models that um, were established in 1928, something like that. Wow. So we're going something like 100 years back, but our aim is like we, are, we call ourselves future bikers. We are rather into the, we, we wish to present the latest news in Velomobiling. We are here with uh, with Denny, who uh, is one of the participants here and has brought this Velomobile. Denny, tell me a little bit about what you have here. Yeah, it's a, it's a home build. I wanted to do uh, something different, what we see on the market, but not all too different. I want to, to study some of the aerodynamics on the on the tail parts here, because it's a, it's a quite uh, a thin part and uh, want to try it for stability and uh, it's quite stable in, in gusty wind so it's uh, qu quite good uh, so and uh, the other things is to be uh, a lightweight bicycle lightweight uh, velomobile and uh, so I did my own parts and a lot of uh, 3D printed parts in nylon carbon parts uh, lightweight I want to try different techniques so at the other things is um, we have also a light wheels with a disc brake. I don't want the, the drum brakes quite heavy, and the disc brake are quite light, and you just uh, notice it when you're pedaling. It's with just more energy, it's accelerating faster, and you, you just make a big difference. Light wheels is quite a big difference. I tested all these on my uh, DFXL before, and uh, really makes a difference. And also, it's almost, it's not a DF, but uh, it's all integrated, uh, no pants, all, everything is integrated. It's a prototype, so we make a second version. We have also a fairing for the wheels inside, because may, now mm -hmm. it's open and uh, you get all the water and the dirt in the face, so I just finished uh, like black. 
and also the, the rear part will be uh, closed and to remove the rear wheel it will be uh, the whole tail part will be removable good and uh, okay. it's 20 kilo quite light but i think i can make it about two or three kilo lighter all right it's always working on uh, improvements so now what about racing do you do some hpv racing uh, with this or is it just uh, for your own not yet i will be at the uh, world championship uh, in austria in austria yeah. yes i think yeah with my wife as well but she has a DF, and i will maybe race with this one i have some modification to do with a uh, rear wheel it's quite a bit uh, wobbling and uh, will be uh, make it stronger. So maybe I will come with uh, X200, I call him X200 version zero. So, but I don't think I'll be ready with version two, but uh, maybe I will race with this one. Sounds good, well, it's interesting, interesting. And uh, tank steering, yes? Yeah, it's tank steering, yeah. I thought to, to make uh, some uh, electronical steering for stability, but it's quite uh, aerodynamic stable, so um, I think I will let it as tank steering, yeah. All right. I, that good. I could have made a tiller, but I think it's uh, good as well, yeah. All right. Very interesting and a beautiful machine. Good luck with the future development. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Thank you very much, Danny. So we're here with uh, Robert, or Bob, and this is Bob's trike that he built. Uh, Bob, where are you from? Uh, ooh, it's Switzerland at the moment, okay. but I grew up in the U.S. So. All right, so this has an interesting story, uh, and it's not just a regular trike. Tell us a little bit about what this is. Well, this was constructed, uh, I was helping a friend design a frame for him. He just lost his job, and he, he was thinking about frame building. And uh, so we designed a really stiff frame that, such that maybe he could win the world championship and therefore get a name. And... Uh, and one day he said, well, Rob, you can't design something for me not having ridden one of these things. So I, I built another one so I would have one to ride. And that's the product. All right. And, and yeah. since, since it's too boring to ride, to design a standard trike, there's millions of them around. I had to design one with a leaning mechanism or something that set it apart from the rest of the world. So it makes it more interesting. Can you show us how the tilting mechanism works? Sure. You just you use your body weight mostly, and you, you also shift uh, like that. It's, it's fixed with the frame, so there's a fixed leaning. So you, you can't, like, depending on the speed, it would be nice to vary the, the lean, but that's not possible with this. And so it's really a lean help, not a like a bicycle. Does it lock vertically as well, or you it just locks, handle it? It locks vertically because it's nice to feel when, you, when yeah. you're going straight. And then click in there. Yeah, it clicks in, so it's nice for shooting straight ahead. Very good. And, and so this is not what you do ordinarily. You're uh, an engineer? I'm a mechanical engineer, and I work at the university in Switzerland. Very nice. Well, this is a great project. You do good work, even though you're not in production or anything. So no, this is just for fun. Nice That's, to meet you, Bob. Yeah, nice to meet uh -huh. you. Look who we found here, uh, Tim Seeger from Bent Revolution in Florida. Tim, how are you? I'm doing great, Gary. So, uh, Tim it just happens to be one of our sponsors here at Betsy, so I just wanted to take a minute to thank you so much for uh, supporting us here at the Laidback Back Report at Betsy this year. So, Tim, why did you do such a thing? I'm happy to do it. I just uh, like to get the word out about recumbents in general. Um, of course, we like to have people come to our shop to buy recumbents. We have good idea. great selection, great service, and we want to make sure we find the right person, the right bike to ride, to make them happy. Absolutely. Well, you made us happy by helping us uh, here at Spetsy, so Tim, it's great to see you here as always. Thanks, Gary. All right. All right. We are here with our buddy Jan from Velomobile World. Jan, how are you? Pretty good. Uh, nice to see you, but we saw you already yesterday evening. Yeah, we had a little preview uh, of uh, Velomobile World yesterday. Let's start talking about some products and what the buzz around right now is on the bulk. Yes. And uh, so I want you to tell us about the bulk. Well, the buzz is also uh, pretty much about the ambassador program. We started um, <clears throat> in November, I think last year. Um, and it's also on bus because we, this is the only Velomobile which we have, which is very quickly adaptable. So um, you can adjust the seats very quickly in case of you want to share your, your bulk with uh, friends or family. Um, that's a big fuss. Uh, it's a bit between the SL and the GT. So 
I see, I hear a lot of comments, uh, especially from Ben Parker, from the trumpet player on the YouTube. That's right. Um, from, uh, from Minnesota. Yeah, from Minnesota. He says still, the bulk is still a little bit small for the American size uh, people. Excuse me? What, what, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, All right, well, let's, let's go on. They're wilder shouldered, <laughs> more muscled. Yes. Yes. Muscled. And, uh... <laughs> you're good. That's good. No, no you're right. it's okay. Um, but this is between the SL and the GT. And we have the same speed as an SL. Uh, but more people fit in it. It's more, uh, more practical. Uh, so there's a lot of downsides from the SL and the Milan compensated with this bulk. So we've, we, Jens Buchbesch, is uh, together with uh, Eckhart Bilk, the designer of the Bilk, mm -hmm. and they have about 20 years of experience. So they took all this uh, knowledge from the last 20 years and dro dropped it in the Bilk. Uh, and they also took their, really the time to develop it. They've been almost two years in development, um, and we didn't say anything about it because we didn't want to make a fuss already before we are finished, because then we need to rush it, because people are like, when it comes, when it comes, you're like, okay, let, let, let's finish it. And in this way, uh, we could take the time. But it's, it's very hard to not say things, because uh, you always have a slip of a tongue. Uh, I, I say things that I shouldn't say because it's still secret and then one person says it and then he tells another friend and that one put it on the forum, in the German forum and then it's... Okay, it's open to the world at that yeah, point. Yeah, then it's, so. it's, it's, it's blow the door out. All right, let's do two things. First of all, you mentioned the ambassador program, talked yeah. a little bit about it, but I, I think maybe we could explain a little bit more about what that was for the American program and then you, I think, also have expanded a bit. Tell us about what is the ambassador program? Yeah, well... The ambassador program, I don't know, can you see the stickers on the? Okay, that's great. Um, so what we do, we put stickers on the bike, so we make more clear that it's a bicycle. Uh, we have also Fail Mobile World, we have the QR sticker on it, so people can scan it and see, get more information. So the ambassador program is more to make uh, more awareness. Hey, this is not a crazy person who, uh, uh, just built his own Velomobile because that's what I hear from a, a couple of uh, people from American Day were like, "Ah, oh, you build it by yourself." And now there's a website on the in it. We have everything, so we want more more awareness of like, "Hey, this is an opportunity for uh, for a second car, or this is an opportunity to cycle faster with less energy." Uh, so that's, that's what we try to get aware, and they get also a uh, financial uh, discount. discount on buying the bike, but also when somebody buys a, a bulk because of your uh, work, you get another uh, discount. So you incentivize these, uh, in this case, American uh, buyers of the yeah. bulk, they can go around and advertise because it's all over the bulk yeah. and build interest uh, and excitement around where they are for people yeah. who see it and may be interested and find out how they might be able to yeah, do that's, it. Yeah? That's, that's the, the goal uh, and we will expand uh, the program also. So maybe we can take a step back and maybe there are people who don't know much about Velomobiles. Yeah. And of course, we think that this is a great starter. And But so for someone who doesn't really know, but it seems intriguing, tell us why would they want a Velomobile like the Bulk? What would they use it for? What, what, are, the, what are the advantages of it? Well, in Europe, uh, we use it also pretty much for everything. Uh, it could be a lifestyle changing. Uh, for uh, I, for personally, I use it for going shopping. I go to the gym. I go for an, just a nice ride to get my head a bit clean, or uh, get some thoughts out of my head. <clears throat> uh, in Holland, when I lived in Holland, I used it for commuting. Right now, I have no commuting distance anymore. So. Yeah, I have an 80 meters commuting distance, so the bulk is not really suitable. If I would do have a job on the office, like an engineer or another office job, 
Uh, it will be, yeah, you could easily, we have clients who drive uh, mainly for commuting and going to friends, family. They do 20,000 kilometers a year. We have, the record is uh, 35,000 kilometers a year. And that's that's pretty, pretty insane. Okay, so comfort, right? I mean, it's comfortable to ride one of these. You're laid back in a recumbent position. Yes. Weather protection? Yeah, well, well, we have, of course, this aerodynamic uh, uh, um, benefits because uh, the air is flowing much sleeker around you. This generates a much higher speeds. So you can uh, cycle longer distances with the same energy you use. So it's not only like, oh, I can faster, but you can also, if you have, we have a limited energy amount in our bodies. We, with the, when in Europe, uh, 10 years ago, a car had 80 horsepower, and it was like a pretty fast car. Now, a car in Europe have 130 horsepower, and you guys have 200, 300 horsepower. Well, we are a little larger, so we need a little more horsepower to get us around. Apparently, apparently. <laughs> Uh, but we, yes. as in our body, we don't have, we have like 250 watts. Uh, so you need to be as efficient as possible to go uh, to work with that energy you have. How about giving us a tour of the bulk, yeah. if you would, So we discussed already the, the aerodynamics. Uh, one very big benefit is the, the seat. So instead of sitting on a uh, tiny seat and having a pressure on your uh, bottom side, uh, we have here a big seat with a uh, fancy seat cushion uh, so it the the pressure on your bottom sides will be uh, it will be expanded across expand, your back yeah, expanded across your yeah expanded across your back so that makes it way way more comfortable you can sit way longer in it without having pains um, <coughs> we have for example here um, some floor mats uh, this is not special for this model, but in case of you have some moisture build up, especially in the cold weather, uh, you have some cold moisture building up and it collects here. And uh, if you have this beautiful floor mats, then the, the moisture is below it and there's some t holes and then the water is leaving you. So this is ki all kind of things for uh, making sure uh, the drive is as comfortable as possible. You can make long trips with it. This is a special made for the U uh, USA. Uh, we had it already, but we make it now in combination with also a light in front of the, uh, the bulk. And because you guys have uh, such a high SUVs, I thought to make it, uh, to make a lot of light there in order that, as, that we have the light as high as possible, as intense as possible. Um, I did this, uh, so all, this is my private bike, this, this one. I made it for myself because in Romania, uh, driving, uh, driving habits are also not that great. And people were complaining that they couldn't see me. Then I assembled this uh, three LEDs and I never hear this problem anymore. It's, it's, it's flashing and it's really, uh, it's annoying. How about some more of the mechanicals? Uh, the steering, the steering here is a little different than the previous bulk. What do we have here? Well, we have here uh, the prototype for uh, the tank steering. Uh, we will have this tank steering hopefully in three, four months uh, in production. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm not happy yet with every detail. Uh, the first version was it, it steered too heavy. Then we had a version which was meh, still a bit heavy, and now we have a, it steers really nice. But if there comes uh, like a pothole or the road is bended, then the bike has a little bit tendency to go to the right, and I don't want to have this. It's not it's not that aggressive, but I think there will come. We will work still on another version to uh, tackle this problem. Jan, what, is it only personal preference uh, between tiller steering and tank steering, or is there some advantage or disadvantage of well, one there, over the other? It's, 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 there's a big part is personal preference. Um, the tank steering, uh, it makes it really easy to, to sit around, and it's very spacious, as you can see. Uh, to stepping in the, and out the bike, it's really nice because it's very spacious. With the, with the tiller steering, you have here the, the, the tiller, tiller yeah. which makes it a bit crowded. Uh, but the, the downside from tank steering is 
here you have a lot of uh, uh, luggage space. And if you have tank steering, your elbows will be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you lose some air, uh, um, luggage space. And for some people, that's no problem. And for others, they say, yeah, well, I, I like to have go shopping. I like to go uh, camping. Because also many people just take it, drop the tents in, everything in. They For weeks, they're gone. Um, or shopping. So it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty much where do you use it for? If you do only commuting, it's, it's, there's so much space here behind the seats that uh, you can have bring some nice clothes with you, your laptop, all kinds of stuff. So we just spoke about uh, tank steering and lift this. And we have here, so here you have a lot of luggage space, but you can have here behind plenty of space for uh, bringing some no clean clothes, a laptop. So if you use it only for commuting, this is big enough. Uh, there's a lot of space here. You can have there's a s little shelf where you can dump. Uh, you can let your wallet, keys, all kind of small stuff there. Uh, so that's all kind of things to make the book also really practical for use. The drivetrain. Uh, you can tell us about your particular choices there and suspension. I think people are interested in knowing why it's so comfortable and that goes there. Yeah. So how about we start with the drivetrain? Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Well, we have uh, quite uh, some options uh, available. Uh, we have 11 speeds, and you can have a uh, double blade front. Uh, on our website, VelomobilWorld.com, you can also see all the uh, options and configurations which are possible. So tell us more about the drivetrain, what can we see here? So here behind we have the rear derailleur, so we made an, uh, a little cover in order you can reach the rear derailleur. Uh, here is of course the rear cassette, there's the 1152 on it, you can see that I drove it a bit, I kept my fingers a bit dirty now. Uh, yeah, so here we can have the 11. We have the rear cassettes, and in the front we will show you now. I can see it, okay. So here in the front we have another cover. Uh, so we make two covers in order you can reach your drivetrain if you want to change something, clean it up. So it, it, we take it really easy with a Velcro. And um, yeah, here it is. This is also, here we have, uh, I don't know, yeah, you can see it on the camera. So here, here you have four simple screws, and with that one you can uh, untied it, move it backward, forward, uh, in order to adjust uh, the, the pedal length for the, the driver. And here we can have uh, uh, also two plates or two chain... Uh, derailleur? Uh, front derailleur? You yeah, about? front derailleur and uh, with the blades. In yeah. this case I have only one blade, because that's my personal preference. Uh, so you can have a lot of gears. Okay, Jan, what is this cut out here on the hood? Well, the, the, this is called the Naka duct. Um, it's, it's for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's for the airflow. So the airflow, you can open and close this one. If you want to have a lot of airflow, you open it, of course. This airflow comes in here, and as you can see, my fingers are sticking out here. So it, it generates uh, the airflow straight in your face in order uh, you had a nice, uh, fresh cooling. And the second reason is also, if, if, if it's raining and the water uh, is pouring down, it collects in here and it will drain here out of the bike. Brilliant. So, um, you doesn't get it on you uh -huh. in that way. Good, good. So here is the, the it, it's, we try to make everything simple and easy as possible because we need to make it light. Of course we can make it way more fancy, but this is how we adjust it. You push it back forth and it stays on the position you want. Uh, it looks simple, it is simple because we want to keep it simple. In case of things breaks down, people can fix it at home. Um, we of course we need to make it light everything uh, and that's why we make it always uh, as simple as possible to keep out complexity all right wonderful can you explain maybe show us a little about the suspension yeah well we have uh, two uh, uh, options? suspension suspension options in the front um, so we have the comfort and the sports 
the, the Comfort, we, we have of course more comfortable uh, springs in it and we are a little bit higher, so like, uh, like a centimeter we higher as with the sport version. Uh, because the Comfort version, I we believe that people use it in the daily uh, driving. Uh, and then you need you need a little bit higher to have all the obstacles to clear, and the sports are more rigid. That's for the front. The rear, uh, there's two options. Uh, you can have uh, with air suspension with damping. So that one is really comfortable uh, because of the air damp uh, air damper. It can uh, react way faster than the spring because always the spring needs a little bit time to to uh, react. Start to react. Uh, and the road is probably pretty, yeah, it, it, you get really fast impact, so the uh, air suspension can handle that better. Uh, and that's an option, uh, but it makes it again a little bit complex. So that's why we, we in, in base we start with uh, non-complex, and if somebody really wants, that's fine, no problem. The motor visor, um, we have uh, this one assembled. It's it's a standard motor visor. We took it because we want to make things easy and simple. There's also an option that we can have an, uh, a wiper. So if it's like pouring rain uh, and you don't want to drive like this because the rain is pouring in your eyes. For example, I was driving a month ago and I had like rain between rain and snow. I had to drive with the visor open because I didn't assemble a wiper and it was going straight in my eyes and it was pretty annoying because I was driving downhill with speeds over 60 miles an hour. It's painful. It's painful. So in that case, I would have closed it and used just the wiper. Yeah. I only I did not assemble it myself. Wow. So Jan, thank you so much for the wonderful tour yeah. of the bulk and everything that you do at Velomobile World, which is amazing. So yeah. the ambassador program, all the other things that you do. Thank you for spending a little time with us at the yeah. Lead Back Bike Report. Yeah, thank you also for coming and uh, have a fun today. Mm -hmm. I, I assume you're gonna make some more interviews still, yeah? Uh, we, we figured when, once we talk to you, that's it. I don't believe you. <laughs> Thanks. I don't believe you. Have a great day. Bye. We are here with my pal Teo from Velomobile.nl. Teo, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. It's so great to see you again. And uh, I see you brought us something a little new here to uh, Spetsy. What do you have? Well, we finally got this Snook L, the Snook Large, ready. So we're very happy to bring it here to the Spetsy to show it for the first time. So why a Snook L. So what's the matter with the with the old snook? Why would you make an L? Well, this, the the first snook was only for people up to one meter eighty, and uh, well, that's a limited market. So, and I wanted to have a snook L for myself. So I'm one meter sixty ninety six. So. Uh, which is real tall, as you folks can yeah. see. So, And people love the Snook because of the speed and comfort of it all. And so, so many people wanted to see if you could do something like that with a larger uh, vehicle, yeah? Yeah, right. There is there is a big demand for the bigger Snook. I think we will sell more of them than of the, the smaller Snook. And uh, yeah, it, and the smaller Snook turned out to be the fastest Velomobile on the market, so. Yeah, that's yeah. a good base to build yeah. from, right? Right. All right, so tell, uh, give us a little guided tour, if you would, of the Snook L. What do, what do we have uh, inside, I guess, maybe first? Well, the drive chain is a, a two times 11 speed uh, Shimano system. Uh, we have the drum brakes, like Watch all, like all uh, Velomobiles have. Uh, we have the special aerodynamic Snook mirrors, adjustable seat, of course, and a similar uh, system as the Quattro Vela with straps, so you can have a, a stepless uh, adjustment of the seat height. Uh, well, of course, the shell is all carbon with the Inegra layer inside for uh, crash protection and also for noise reduction. Uh, it's got the special uh, narrow uh, Velomobile crankset that we developed that almost all Velomobiles are using nowadays. This is the, the one mold we didn't get to finish. so where the rear uh, jockey wheel is uh, is mounted, so we need to finish this mold. It's, there's just a prototype from the smaller Snook inside now. It will have a, a 700C rear wheel and full suspension, of course. Yeah, it, it, it has an oil-damped uh, rear shock. For the suspension, all right. Um, 
Yeah. What about uh, hood, race hood at all? Do you have yeah, some? The race, this is the snook race hood, and we will, we will have to adjust it a little bit to fit for, the, for this snook, but it will be quite similar. That's beautiful. Let me, you can drop that if you want. It's live, it's 25 kilos. <laughs> He's got that, look at that. And he's not that strong. <clears throat> so we have the suspension, the XT uh, Shimano XT derailleur, 11 speed, the 19 millimeter rear axle, which is very stiff. And of course, a fully enclosed drive chain for weather protection. So beautiful. All right. Well, All right then, so Dale, thank you so much for spending a little time with us and showing us the Snook L. Good luck with that, and it's so nice to see you again. Yeah, you're welcome, and Okay. see you later. Bye. So I'm here with uh, Florian from Wolf & Wolf. Very, yeah, very. it's good to see you again. Yeah, see you live, uh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. The last time we, say, uh, we saw online, and now to meet is perfect. Face to face. Now, Florian, what he's talking about is his responsibilities with uh, running this big show, Spetsy, but right now we're going to talk about Wolf & Wolf, the manufacturer of these amazing bikes right behind us. So, uh, Florian, if you could tell us uh, what you brought here to Spetsy that uh, you'd like to talk about. So, we have uh, some little updates on uh, our bikes. And uh, it's the first time we um, present the bike life, the finished uh, new model with the integrated cables. And uh, that's really nice. So these short wheelbase recumbent bikes are suitable for who? Who, who is your customer for this type of bike? Um, the customers are normally already riding a recumbent bike. Mm -hmm. So and then they want to have a little bit better, faster, lighter bike. And so they come to us. That's the normal customer for them. For, uh, for us. What else of interest on another bike that you have that you like to talk about? So um, over there we have the electric bike and uh, there you can see the, the newest Shimano engine and um, you can ride over 100 kilometers with, with a big um, battery package. So that's your electrified version of yes, uh, the that's bikes. Yes, the newest so. electrified version. Very nice. Okay. Well, it's a great looking booth that you have here, Florian, and we're so excited that you have decided to put this all together. So thanks again. Thank you. Okay. So bye -bye. Me too. Okay. We are here with Mekela from Italy and Zara Bikes. So it's nice to see you. Thank you for uh, for uh, joining us for the interview. Thanks to you, Gary. Good. All right. So, very interesting trikes here. Obviously, a tilting trike. First of all, tell us a little bit about Zara Bike, if you would. Well, Zara Bike is a company that uh, uh, born in 2020, but actually the project dates back to 2010. We had a collaboration with a couple of universities in Turin and Padua, and um, after several prototypes, this one is uh, the final production. Is the first production that. Uh, we start in March 2023. We start uh, with a batch of 30 pieces and now we see how it's going. Uh, the peculiarity of this project is the tilting mode. So compared to a normal Delta trike, you have the advantage of this system. And just to, sh just to show you a bit how it's moving, uh, the advantage is that when you turn around, your barycentrum is much lower so you don't have uh, the pushing effect of the G-force that is pushing you outside, but uh, it's much safer. And then you have a, a really good driving experience. You feel like a motorbike, you are able to have a lot of fun. Right, so it's safe in your center of gravity. Tend, the, 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 the forces tend to push you into the seat yeah, and not exactly, away, yeah? Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So, um, all right, so maybe we can talk about specific features of the, yep. of the trike. We set up uh, an engine by Oli, it's 36 volt, and uh, we have uh, its own battery, 36 volt with uh, 13 ampere, and we are able on average to reach 70 uh, kilometers uh, on the no normal life for the, for the battery. And, uh, you have uh, three wheels, so we don't have uh, differentials, so we don't need to have a differential. And then we have 
patent uh, the system of the tilting. So the peculiarity, you have a pin that goes inside of the hole of this system and it allows you to drive it even without the tilting mode. So maybe when you are going too slow up on a hill or uh, where is a crowded situation, just to be safer, you block it and you can go. Uh, when it's blocked, your uh, uh, radius of turning is 4 meter, otherwise a bit, bit longer, of course. And, um, well, more or less it's uh, aluminium, uh, the, the frame is in aluminium. Mm -hmm. And the advantage, um, I think that uh, uh, we really approach the market with a really nice price since we weld and paint uh, our own even old bikes. So it's artisanal, but a bit industrialized. Good. And so in terms of selling these, you are actually actively recruiting dealers, right? Yeah. Tell, tell yeah. us what, yeah. what your idea is there for marketing. Uh, let's say that uh, in Italy we have a particular situation. We are evaluating just to approach rent a bike shop or goes directly to final users. While in all Europe, for example, if you look to German market, to Dutch market, French market, where are more experienced about these kind of systems, yes. uh, we are working on a traditional network uh, from dealer to dealer and dealer to final user. And uh, we are trying to find uh, some good partner here. And uh, the fair is really nice, a lot of people, a lot of interest. Yes, Schmitzi is great for that. So we hope you find someone. And thank you for sharing all the information thank you so uh, much, from yeah. Zerobike. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. That was an amazing Spezi 2023. Uh, a lot of hard work from my amazing crew here, uh, including... Trey. Lisa. Marilyn. I am Gary Solomon, the host of the Laid Back Bike Report. And 
flying the drone on the other side of that camera, our pal Jim Pratt. So we appreciate Jim. All right. So uh, from Schmetzi 2023, we're calling that a wrap, guys. So go on. The other major product that you guys produce is this amazing quad called the Pony 4. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the Pony 4 is a product that started... Oh, hold on. Yeah. All right, Hansa, so... Hands on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you call, call me Hans. Hans is okay. I'm here with Franz from <laughs> HP. Bell oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. All right. And then lastly... <laughs> we, we give your phone back, yeah? Thank you very much. <laughs> if you have any voice left, um, it, now it's time to use it. <laughs> I am gonna... I'm leaving everything on the field. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now... Grab, 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 yeah, grab. Grab Jim. Grab Jim. There you oh, go. Okay, go. Careful. Hey! Oh. <laughs> Woo-hoo, you did good! Jim, yeah. we tried our best to, to break destroy it. your wagon and we're it's not nice able to do it. So long! Bye from Spetsy 2024, 2025, 2026. Let's see. Oh, and Larry Hobbs, uh, where's he at? Uh, that's a good point. And Jersey Benz. And, and uh, uh, Trey, Larry, uh, Larry, uh, Larry Hobbs, where is he? Jersey Benz. At Jersey Benz.